loud. All right, we are recording. Great. Well, welcome to uh, tonight's uh, first budget workshop for the fiscal year 2022 uh, town budget for the town of Wethersfield. Um, this is the April 21st uh, special meeting of the town council. Uh, it is being recorded. This is a virtual meeting, as everybody can tell, and it's being recorded per the governor's executive orders uh, that I believe are still in effect until May 20th, um, unless they are extended. Um, we do have on tonight's agenda, and we see, I think I saw Steve. Steve's on from building department. We've got the fire marshal, Anthony Dignati. Uh, so Chief uh, Bailey will be here later for uh, fire suppression. Kathy, or not, um, Sally Katz for physical services. The chief, well, we have the chief for the police and then uh, our registrars of voters for elections. And then finally, and I did see Mike O'Neill on, uh, on this uh, finance and he will go through debt service, central office insurance, uh, reserve for our retirees, uh, transfers out of uh, budget, um, utility, the MDC, um, financials, as well as IT. And I think usually, does he do that with, uh, um, who does he do IT with, or does he do that on his own? On my radio, we do with, uh, with John Eichner, our consultant. Okay. Which I think is Monday. Yeah, that might be tonight. Um, okay. Well, if we've got Steve on already, Steve, you ready to go? I am. I am ready. Okay. Good, e good evening. Good evening, everyone. I'm here. I'm Steve Letterell. I'm here to present the building department budget. Um, the building department is uh, consists is is made up primarily of employees and um, operating expenses. We don't have any, um, any additional programs or, or anything like that. Um, on the budget, the first section is uh, hang on a second. salaries and benefits. Uh, those are all contractual. Um, the second line item that we have is um, copy and binding. Um, I proposed uh, copy and binding at $1,100. That was reduced by $300 and a new proposal is 800 on that. Um, the next line item is uh, legal advertisements. We're running a little short this year on advertisements. We're getting in more um, HCC applications and things like that. So I did increase that by $500. So that went from 54.33 uh, last fiscal year to 62.33 this fiscal year. Um, travel training and dues, I proposed the same as last year, 39.25. That was reduced by $800 um, to 31.25. That, um, that's for state mandated classes. We have to have 90 hours every, every three years, um, state adopted code books, reference materials, things like that. Um, that concerns me a little bit, that reduction, because the state was supposed to adopt a new code cycle this year, um, last fiscal year, I'm sorry, and they put it off because of COVID. So I'm thinking that they're gonna probably try to adopt the code cycle this year, which means that we would have to buy all new code books. Um, classes have been hard to come by because of COVID. Um, me and the other inspectors were a little behind on classes, so we're going to have to take additional classes this year. Um, so that 800 reduction is probably going to hurt us a little bit. Um, support services, that was an HTC online tool that we, we used, but we didn't use it a lot, and we could do without it, so I just took that whole line item out. So that was a reduction of $300. Um, office machinery, that stayed the same at $1,200 from last year. Um, clothing, I proposed $2,600. That was reduced by $500 to $21. That's for um, identification shirts, uh, safety shoes per union contract, um, safety vests, things like that. Uh, general office supplies remain the same at $2,600 from last year to this year. And equipment, um, that's tools, screwdrivers, tape measures, testers, safety glasses, hard hats, all that. Um, I had proposed $800. That was reduced $300 to $500. Um, to get into the meat and potatoes of the building department, we've, um, we've been very busy this year. We've been busier this year than we have actually last fiscal year. Um, as of April 1st, um, last year, we had taken in 1,630 
permit applications. This this fiscal year, as of April 1st, we took in 1,936. So we are ahead of the game by 306 uh, permit applications. Um, the estimated construction cost last year for April 1st was 20,278,000. This year we're at 22,680, almost 22,700. Um, our budgeted revenue was $400,000 and we will hit that budgeted revenue amount this year. So um, that's pretty much- What was that last, what was the revenue hit? You were... the rev we're, we will hit, we had, the budgeted revenue was $400,000 and we will, we will hit that this year. Okay. We're on schedule to hit that. Um, so that's pretty much it with the building department. If anybody has any questions. Uh, any questions uh, and feel free. I mean, you know, I'm taking notes and I've got the budget in my side. So um, feel free to just ask questions. Mary, you had your hand up. Thanks. Yeah, I just, um, I know you mentioned that you didn't get to do as much of the training as you normally do this year. and. Um, I, but generally overall, but yet you're busier in other areas. Um, do you have any savings left over? Do you think you will at the end of this fiscal year that you'll be returning to this? We, we probably will. Um, but like I said, it's just been a different year. Uh, you know, classes now they're, you know, they're starting to get together probably within the last month. Um, they're starting to offer more classes through the state. Um, and like I said, it, you know, as far as code books and stuff go, they've been they've been slow on adopting new code books in years and years and, and technical manuals and stuff. But I'm sure that that's going to pick up. But we will probably see some of that revenue coming back. All right. Thanks. And, and um, I'll just a follow up real quick, and then I'll jump to, to Deputy Mayor and then to you, Dan. Uh, can any of those code books be online? Are they online at all? Um, I'm not sure, not that I know of. I mean, it's something that, you know, we usually buy the hard copies just for referencing and we reference them quickly. If we're on the phone with an architect or something easy to grab and reference. I try to buy a set and a half. Um, we share one complete set and then we, you know, the other, the other half, the, the important ones, residential code book, the building code and things like that. We have two sets up in case two of the inspectors are working at, you know, something on the same time. Um, they, they do offer online code books, but they're, they run into the thousands. Gotcha. Okay. Thanks, Steve. Uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Yeah, Steve, um, you talked about the uh, increased uh, advertisement costs for legal notices. Do we have an opportunity to increase the permit fees to cover those increases? I mean, that's something we could look at. I we're, we're pretty much on schedule with other towns, um, but that's something we could look at in the future. I, we, we changed the, the fees probably a few years ago. Um, some people complain that they're the highest around, you know, um, I mean, it's something that I guess we could look at. And then my second question is going to be ugly. That's okay. Um, if you had to cut 3% out of your budget, which would be $18,000, do you have any idea where that? The only way that I could, the only way that I could do that is by, by cutting a position. I, that's the only way I, you know, what I have to operate is, is minimal. Um, you know, like I was telling Gary every year, I try to keep, you know, try, try to keep my, my budget from, from increasing. Um, yeah. you know, the only thing that I have is operating costs. Those were, were reduced this year. Um, I, I'm right there. Uh, the okay. only thing I could do is re reduce, is, is eliminate a position. I had to ask. <laughs> no, I, I understand. No, I, believe me. I understand. I understand. That's all I had. Okay. Dan? Yeah, I, I just have a question and I don't, maybe it's here and I just started using readers. So maybe I just <laughs> can't do it. Okay. Very, dis very disappointed that I had to resort to this. But I yeah, guess I'm with you. I'm with we you. All, we all go yeah. there. Yeah, I'm with you. But the, um, <laughs> where we have, is, is there a column or do we intentionally not put it in there that shows what they've spent? So we have adopted and then we have proposed, but I would love to be able to see, you know, we like chief building official, and I'm just using the top one. It was adopted 114, 144. What was spent? Was it 114, 144? Because when you look at stuff like supplies, 
you know, and if I see a category that says supplies were $2,600, but we only spent 1500, then I would say, okay, well, then we probably don't need 2600 going into the new budget. Is there a column in here that shows that or are we just not showing it? It's included in the front of the book, there's a section called additional information. Um, and in that right now contains revenue and expenditures. If you get to the expenditures towards the back, uh, Mike O'Neill was kind enough to create a breakdown by line item. He's showing you what it looks like. Um, it actually gives you your actuals for fiscal years 17, 18, 19, 20, the 21 budget, the actual, and a column for variance, which is what the balance is, and then uh, what the uh, what's proposed for um, fiscal year 22. Obvious, the caveat is we still have three months left. There could always be encumbrances or things that we haven't paid yet that haven't hit those line items. So it's it's kind of a tough prediction. I Well, for whatever it's worth, I think it would be a lot easier if it was all on the same sheet because then we can see, are we tracking to that? Are we actually over budget? Are we under budget? Because, you know, and Tom brings up a great point. You know, if you were to cut X percentage out of this budget, you know, that would help us say, well, what about in here and here? Every, so, everything's on the same sheet in the additional information. You, you can see it. The sheet that Gary just described has all the information that's on the department worksheet, what we call the department worksheet behind each tab. So the leftmost, the rightmost column is the proposed post 22 budget by line item. It just doesn't have the detailed descriptions. If, if we if we put it all on the detailed description sheet, you would need a much greater powered lens on those new readers. We need that anyways. But, all right. Could, could we get the uh, year to date numbers extended out, you know, extrapolate out to what we think the three months is going to bring to get us a closer idea of where we might end up. I realize there may be, you know, big money at the last day, but is there a way we can, you know, I just took, I just took nine months of salaries, for example, and that it's right on target. There's 18,000 left or whatever it is. Yeah. Do you want to buy a line item all, all 10 pages, Tom? Yeah. Could you do that? Every line for all 10 pages? For the, yeah, for that front section, right? The yeah. proposed expenditures. I guess the only caution I'll give you is it's, I don't know how helpful it actually will be for you. Things like salaries, probably predictable. Um, other I mean, things, maybe not. Question of time. I mean, to do it at that level of detail, we'll do it. But it's, you know, we're looking at about 400 lines. You can't just like do an Excel sheet and. It is an Excel sheet, but what do you want? I mean, it's, you know, the, the payroll is fairly easy, but it's not, you know, there's vacation and sick time payouts on retirements and people who've been terminated. So that complicates payroll. But again, yeah. we, I'll do whatever you want. It's just, no, just, uh, it's just you, you know. I'm trying to look. Uh, the council wants we'll take care of so getting, that, now i don't want to get off track it's not building department but just the concept um it, take take a item that's already showing as overspent um you know road salt for example or something like that it's as of march uh, 31st it's showing as twenty seven thousand over or something like that so does that mean it's going to get a lot worse? Should we it's anticipate almost. it's going to get worse? Or, you know, maybe road salt wasn't the right example, but, you know. It wasn't. <laughs> All right, so I'll, I'll, I'll actually steal an example from mine. Like, town manager's budget has labor attorney in yeah. there, and it's right. negative, right? right? Chances are that's going to continue to go negative because I probably don't have every bill in. We're still in the middle of negotiating labor contracts. I have grievances that are pending. So that's gonna to continue to go in the hole. Um, 
So what I'm suggesting is we took that, take that number. I think you were 120,000 or something like that. Budgeted a hundred. I think we budgeted 12 or so. 12 and we're at 86. Or whatever, if I'm on the wrong line, but you know, divide that by the, yeah, we, we by, your budget by 12 months and add the uh, three unspent months to it. It's Listen, it's just a question of what the council wants over the course of the next three or four weeks. We'll get you whatever you want, but we can't, probably can't get everything yeah. you think of. So we'll just prioritize it, but we certainly can do that. I mean, we, of course we can do that. I'll leave it up. I'll leave it up to the group to decide. I mean, I'm doing it here with calculator. Yeah. Why don't we um, have that discussion just because we're on a time frame with a lot of them. We'll have that discussion. We'll be, there'll be plenty of conversations with Mike O'Neill and Gary in the next three. Okay. Four. Yeah. Thanks. Yep. Yeah, we can do that. Okay. Uh, any other questions, uh, Mary? You had a question for Steve. Um, yeah, I had, so you had mentioned that you're um, gonna hit about seven hundred thousand in revenue. Is that? I, and I'm looking at the um, the revenue section of the in the budget binder under additional information, and maybe it's split into multiple sections. So I'm not sure, but it says that the building department it's budgeted for. Four hundred thousand dollars in revenue. That's um, not correct. It is four hundred thousand. It's four hundred thousand yeah. that is budgeted and that you will hit. Yes, correct. Yes. Oh, okay. So yeah, it's per, not okay. yeah, permit permit fees and things like that. We will hit that that incoming amount of money. Yes. Um, you're not going to exceed that with being so. Um, yeah, we probably will. I don't know by how much, but yeah, we probably will exceed that by a little bit. All right. And you think like for this coming year, it's also budgeted for 400,000. You think that's about accurate or? Yeah, it's hard to figure, uh, you know, sometimes some, some years are better than others. I'd rather come in maybe a little bit over than under. Um, yeah, it's hard to predict, but 400, I think is a good number. Because I know like for actuals and the like, you know, past it's been like 731,000, 513,000. So yeah, I just well, didn't know. Yeah, depending on the, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, okay. It depends on the size of the jobs that come in. Last fiscal year, the big jobs were like the board and project and things like that. We had a lot of, you know, condo complexes and things like that coming in. So it all depends on the size of usually the commercial jobs. The larger commercial jobs generate more revenue for us. Um, like I said, this this year is, is comparison to last year. You know, the board and was something that was actually prior to the fiscal year of last year. Um, so all those rev all that revenue and stuff. So we're about, you know, we're pretty close to where we were last year. Um, at this point, we did generate more permits There are more permits that we generated are on the residential side more so than a commercial side probably had something to do with COVID or, or whatever, but um, the amount of permits that we generate are more but the revenue is, is probably a little bit lower. All right, thanks. I Mary I try to be conservative. Um, a good example. I mean, it, you're you're right. What you see with with building permits, but the reality is we just don't know. Um, just to offer two examples of accounts where we have the exact opposite happening is uh, the motor vehicle supplement line, which is that's that's not trying to guess the building activity in town. That's trying to guess uh, people's you know purchase of motor vehicles um, from you. Year and it's a it's a real shot in the dark. We're behind on that one, um, and another one is interest income, which um, you know collapsed in March of last year and and since. And you know we cut it significantly in this budget. I cut it significantly in this budget, but it uh, it's probably I think we have two fifty in there, which is which is probably a number that's aggressive in the other direction. So it's just budgeting revenues is, uh, you know, it's certainly, it's worth having the, a discussion about it, but we, it, it kind of cuts both ways is, is in the end. Uh, 
Uh, good evening, gentlemen. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, my question is also with the revenues. Um, you mentioned the COVID um, and whatnot. Do you expect that now when we're opening back up in those residential permits that you've been seeing because everyone's home, do you think that number will drastically drop now that we're proposedly going to be opening up or it's kind of hard to say? Yeah, it's hard to tell. Um, construction never really, never really fell off from the time that COVID started. Um, commercial side, everything kept going. Um, residential side, it seems like people did more things at home. It's, it's, it's really hard to tell or how to, how, how to predict. Um, I would hope that it maintains, um, but, but it's hard to tell. Thank you. Yeah. Interest rates are still down, so people may, you know, decide to take out loans to do home improvements and whatnot. Yeah, I'm sure that, yeah, that, I'm sure that that's moving people along also with construction projects. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions for Steve while we got them? Hearing none? Okay. All right, guys, thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thank you. <laughs> Drive carefully, Steve. Thank you, I appreciate it. Moving on, and I think, uh, did I see, I saw the chief, oh, Anthony, you, you, you got onto the screen. I was looking for your name. Okay, I see you. Anthony, you ready? I'm ready. Okay. okay. Good evening, everyone. Um, present the budget here tonight. Um, it's pretty much the same budget I present every year. Um, there are some slight increases in operating supplies. Um, this is one of the few offices that um, much like the PD and the fire department operate 24 seven. So I'm on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, during this year, even though with COVID, um, we didn't miss a beat here. This was one of the busiest years we had. And I think Steve explained that there was a lot of construction going on. So pretty much almost everything the building department does, um, I piggyback off of that. I also have to enforce the fire safety code and fire prevention code. So the inspections they end up doing, I also have to do them, but we're looking at different codes. So uh, I have to uh, pretty much accommodate all the inspections they have to do. During this time, unfortunately though, my deputy fire marshal, I shouldn't say unfortunately, but he retired um, after a lot of years in the fire department and, and moved out of town. So I did lose um, a body here. Right now I'm down to myself and my part-time inspector, which is which shows up as the part-time inspector on line two of the budget. He works 19 and a half hours. And then I have an inspector in the fire department who's a volunteer who helps out in the weekends or at night if I'm not available. So uh, also during this time frame, and I think the fire chief will explain also, uh, the clerical person in the fire department left and we had a void for about three months. So that also hampered our office because um, that person was also um, helping out for us doing some of our um, administrative needs. So that put another burden on our office. And also last year we lost our, I lost my administrative assistant. That job was rolled into engineering. So that person was um, helping me do a lot of the administrative functions that need to get done on a daily basis. So pretty much right now with this budget, um, one and a half of us pretty much probably do the amount of work of three or four people. So I know we're looking for cuts, but pretty much I'm not sure if I can go any lower than when I'm presenting here. We did a total of 2,191, pretty close to 2,200 activities this year. That was one of the highest years we've had. Um, I think the only year we had a higher year was probably back in 2014, 2015 during the high time of Wethersfield High School when we were doing hundreds of inspections. So again, it, it seems to be very busy around here. We get a lot of work done for uh, pretty much one and a half people. There's a slight increase. I just did some quick math here just to fight, try to figure out, but um, my operational side of my budget is only about seven to eight percent of it. The rest is all uh, salaries, um, insurance, pension, workings comp, things like that. So I'll answer any questions anyone may have. Any questions for Anthony? It looks like it's pretty straightforward. 
you know, the drivers on this are, are like you said, salary and benefit and pension. Uh, yeah, I just want to also add the training uh, budget is going to be very important this year because of COVID, uh, pretty much training shut down. Myself and the building inspector were mandated by state law to achieve 90 hours of training every three years. I don't know where he's at, but I can I can say it's going to be pretty close for me. I may end up getting decertified because I don't know if I'm going to get enough hours in because there was no training available. I don't know if the state's going to extend that. If I get decertified, I can't do my job. So it's going to be um, next year. I'm going to have to spend a lot of time at training if it's available or once they open that back up. Again, this is a state mandate that I have to go to training and I have to maintain my hours. So um, my cycle started just as COVID started. So again, we lost a year of training. So it's very important that we attend training. The state does provide some free training, um, but not much. The state used to provide a lot more. They're not providing as much training as they used to. Some of, some of this training, I have to attend conferences, NFPA seminars, things like that, that unfortunately cost money to get my training credits um, to keep my certification. Okay. Anthony, what, what would we do if you weren't able to get recertified? What's the town's option? Town's option is you'll have a decertified fire marshal. I'll, I'll be out of a job. Yeah, we, that doesn't work. Not a good option. <laughs> yeah, that's it's not really the option. I'm hoping the state's going to extend that because I think this is going to happen in every municipality. They just haven't said anything yet. Unfortunately, we've asked the question in our, you know, our county fire marshals meetings and whatnot, but no one seems to know the answer to that. So I'm hoping, I think probably at post, the police officers probably have the same issue too, because they have to do certification training. So hopefully they extend that. But the way the three year cycles run, I lost a whole year of, of uh, training calendar. So if it, you know, if I was on a different cycle, it wouldn't have been as bad. If my cycle started this year, I'd be starting with zero, I'd be good. But I usually try to average 30 to 40 hours of training every year to make that 90. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm starting off, I got about four hours of credit because they did have some Zoom meetings. But as you know, with Zoom, they would have these one hour classes. They'd be 500 people in the training session. The, th the thing would crash. So it was uh, very difficult to do it. Gotcha. Matt, I saw your up next. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, Anthony, um, I, I, this is a, a question. It seems like there might be some frustration with the with all the hours that are needed. Do we think this has turned into, it sounds like a state mandate to me, part of sort of those little bit of the unfunded, but it could have very good purpose. But I'm curious from your professional opinion, is the amount of credentialing or, or, or training classes, you know, ongoing training that you take, a lot of us professionals take them, but do we think it's necessary to keep up with, uh, at the level that they're asking for to keep up with whatever needs to be kept up with for your profession? Or is this a little bit more starting to fall into that credentialing, like we're doing it to check boxes and to make, make numbers versus sort of more substantive? And well, I, imagine, I, think, I think the 90 hours, are, are probably right there. I mean, they've always been, I've never had a problem making the 90 hours. And again, it, you know, it gets to a point that in a, in a normal year, there's plenty of training opportunities. I just don't take up, I don't take part in all the training only because if I'm at training all the time, who's gonna do the work here, you know, being a small office like that. So there's a lot of demands here. So I try to be reasonable in the training I take to try to just make the, um, I shouldn't say bare bones, but get my 90 hours and get the beneficial training. Like, um, like Steve said, the code's going to change. So when the code changes, we have to go to training to, to learn the updates of the code. So that's going to be time consuming. So I'll be away from the office. I try not to spend a lot of time away from the office at training, but again, there's a, there's a balance there. I think the 90 hours is reasonable, but when you lose a year, like, you know, God forbid, if I was sick for a year and lost a year, it would be the same you know, the same issue. A year was just a killer to lose, uh, you know, without training. And you, uh, although the 90 hours might be reasonable, is it, is it like 90 hours well spent or is it like, you know, I get the 20 hours, I, it helps me out doing my job, but you know, the rest is, 
repetitive. Um, I've been there. I'm an experienced fire, for, you know, Marshall. Yeah, for, you know, probably for a younger person, it's, it's beneficial. You know, I, I've been doing this for 35 years. So a lot of right. sometimes the training is kind of redundant. So I mean, you know, like yourself, your own profession, sometimes you're sitting through training classes, if you, you know, if you've already done it, or it's just kind of an update or a refresher. So again, I, I think it's reasonable. The people that are newer probably benefit more than us old dogs because uh, again, you know, doing this for so long, some of the training's redundant, but again, we have that mandate out there. That's why normally on a normal cycle, I try to pick and choose what training, if it's something I'm really good at, I try to avoid, I don't take that type of training. And you'd call that, this is like fire marshal required training hours it's fire mar our certification yeah we it's uh it's um they're called uh fire marshal credits uh, building inspectors get them as well so we have to maintain that 90 hours every three years to get recertified at, at the end of the th our three-year cycle we get a nice little letter saying congratulations you you met your and they track it pretty um strictly so if you don't you know you have a you can appeal it, you know, again, if you had some kind of problem, say you had a, you know, a medical issue or something that you can probably go to, a, you can go to the board and appeal it. But I'm just hoping the state's going to just extend that. So, uh, you know, we don't have problems down the road. But that's why I'm just trying to stress that the training next year I'll be doing or this upcoming year, once everything opens up, I got to, to um, get back on the books and get some training in. Thank you. Okay. Anthony, can I trouble you to just review the the positions are, are they are the positions you have on this budget filled right now or the fire marshal obviously that's me my part-time inspector yes that's inspector McCricky. he works 19 and a half hours a week he's really considered a part-time employee of the town um that third item, item part-time temporary fire inspector slash fire watch that's for my volunteer inspector who's in the fire department and again, he covers if um, if I'm out of town or if I go on vacation, he helps out at nights and weekends. He pretty much doesn't um, work the day shift that we do. Um, that's also that money's also there for fire watch. Sometimes, let's say uh, building, say a sprinkler system went down in the school to keep the school open. We have to put a fire watch in there with firefighters. So either my inspector does it or uh, Chief Bailey. Um, assigns me some firefighters. I put them in there and I pay them to do that because that's really not their job as firefighters. So we pay them fire inspector rate. So they get paid a little more money for that. So that account, very rarely does that account um, get spent. The whole amount gets spent. But again, it depends on, you know, on the situation or on the year. And a lot of times that fire, I should say that fire watch, when we do have to have a fire watch, we back charge. So if it's a board, if it's a town building, obviously we can't charge anybody, but let's say we had a problem at a you know, 100 Putnam, um, Gray Meadow Road or some large office building, if we had to put a fire watch in, we would back charge like the police department does for private duty. And then the money goes back. Uh, Mike can explain, uh, O'Neill can explain that better how they charge, but the money comes back to the town. So we, we get that money back. Okay. Thank you. Mary. Um, I just have a quick question. I see that, um, you know, as you said, most of the increase in your budget is the salaries and insurance and pension and stuff you don't have any control over. Um, there was just one other area that I just wanted to ask you about that there was a pretty sizable jump was the um, agency supplies or special agency supplies. I just wanted to. Oh, yeah. I'm the, sorry. I should explain that. Um, yeah, I did, I did go up $1,200 um, twofold. One, I want to get an additional iPad. Um, right now we have one iPad for the two of us. So I want to get an additional iPad because it does help with, an ins with our inspections. So I want to get my um, inspector and I, I'm going to upgrade mine and, and give him mine. So that's money in there for that. And then like Steve said, the codes are um, changing. Uh, years ago, the state used to provide us a copy of the code at free of charge. They no longer do that. So there will be some codes I'm going to have to purchase. So that's why I put, I'm not sure if that's, an, I'm not sure if that's a little too much money, but I wanted to be a little more conservative, make sure I have the right amount. So, and a lot of times the price of the codes don't come out until they get um, approved. So I can't go online and see how much the Connecticut fire safety code is going to cost until it's pr actually produced. So Hopefully I won't have to spend all that money. So it might be a few more dollars in there that, that may be um, 
than it should be. I was just trying to ballpark it. And Anthony, that, that iPad connects to the, um, like the dispatch system, right, for emergencies? Yeah, it's, it connects yeah. to our next gen system. It also connects to our software um, system for our records management. Right, so that allows them to monitor activity within the field when emergencies are going on, so. Correct, and the good things about the iPads too, it's a built-in camera too. So we don't, you know, we don't always have a camera on as long as we got our iPad. We Sometimes we have to document some of this uh, either in investigation or inspections. Uh, what I'm hearing is, hang on one second, Dan. But what I'm hearing is state mandates, as Matt was talking about with credits earlier, the new code book, which used to be provided to municipalities. Um, you know, not much we can do with state mandates on this Zoom right now, but you know, it's definitely something that we advocate to try and you know put some brakes on. Uh, the other thing is, um, and just may I just just explain to you so you folks just know what we're dealing with to complicate it more. I mean, you can see the um, the NFPA software subscription I have in there for, I believe it's eighteen hundred dollars. The font's kind of small, but. The, on the fire side, we enforce um, the Connecticut Fire Safety Code and Fire Prevention Code. Part of that is probably hundreds of NFPA codes. So years ago, I used to buy the codes. Now I got the subscription series. So that $1,800 seems like a big amount, but the amount of codes I have access to are endless. So that actually saved the town money. On the flip side, when the state changed the codes about 10 years ago, there are now two vendors. So I also have to buy codes from the International Code Council. So there's two families of codes I have to purchase um, to enforce the Connecticut Fire Safety Code. So those are not available online. Actually, I think I did look, it was very, very costly. So it, it's less expensive to buy the hard copy every three or four years whenever it updates. Um, so, you know, once we buy them this year, next year, that, that line item can be dropped. So I won't need the money next year for that because the code cycle is usually three to four years. Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, no problem. No, it's good to know. Um, and then do you need, uh, us to advocate on that 90 hour, uh, requirement with the, the pause due to the state in COVID? I mean, how far are, are the fire marshals association getting with, uh, uh, the administration on, you know, relaxing that requirement at all? Well, we did ask the state fire marshal. He really didn't have an answer for us because I don't think it's his decision. I think that may have to be done by executive order. The legislature probably has to extend that because it is a state statute. So uh, I, I, my gut feeling it's going to happen, but I don't want to come here and tell you it's going to happen and it doesn't. Well, I mean, but I think have... I think with COVID oh. relaxing, with the rules relaxing, when now we'll probably see more training opportunities. So the next two years, I'll just have to try to hustle and get everything done. Gotcha. Okay. But yeah, if you see someone you know, to put a bug in their ear. <laughs> so it's not you're not on your third year of your three year cycle. You're on. The I have first... two more years, right? Got. Gotcha. Okay. But I lost a, you know, and again, I'm not the only one in this boat. There's others. And I, again, Steve could be in the same, same boat. He may just not have brought it up, but he's on a three-year cycle too. I just don't know when his three years begin or end. Got it. Okay. And uh, Dan, sorry to. No, that, that's fine. Mine's, I don't even know if this is a question or a clarification, but um, the pension dollar amount it has the highest increase out of any department's since 2017 is the pension in the fire marshal department has more than doubled since 2017. Is there a reason behind that? Was there, I'm just curious because I was looking at all the other ones and no one had as big a jump. And if Mike's on the line, he's probably better to describe it because I'll do a terrible job, but there is a rationale related to the number of retirees still on the pension compared to who just retired. And Mike, I'll shut up and let you do it in the correct fashion, but there is a correlation. Sure. Not, not related to Anthony, other than the fact that he is on the pension. So let me start by saying the amount that we've budgeted for the pension contribution is an estimate right now. And we're waiting, we expect any time to get the valuation from the actuaries, but we think we're 
we think we're pretty close and it's a, it's an 18% increase over last year. If you recall last year, we implemented new mortality tables um, into the actuarial assumptions for the plan. Um, and that had almost as much of an effect last year was about an 18% increase. What we're assuming this year is a further reduction in the assumed rate of return on the plan assets. So if you assume a lower rate of return, um, that means you've got more of an unfunded liability that you have to take care of because the what you expect to earn <clears throat> on the existing assets um, over the course of future years is less. Um, the reason we're reducing that is is because we're that's at the recommendation of the actuary. Um, they want us to go from uh, we're now at six and three quarter percent and they want us down to I think six we may be six and a half. They want us down to six and a quarter. So the 18 percent that we're assuming um, takes that into account a further reduction in the assumed rate of return. Um, so that's one thing. The overall increase is extremely large. The other thing that you'll see, particularly when you look at small departments, is very large increases and decreases. And that's because there are fewer and fewer, um, the plan was closed to non-police employees in 2013. So um, there's a dwindling number, I'll just call them a town hall. So that's town hall employees. And, board, and there's some at the Board of Ed as well, non-certified uh, employees at the Board of Ed. So that's a shrinking pool. People are retiring and there's fewer and fewer. Um, so what you'll see uh, when you look at the finance budget or the, um, the IT budget is actually a significant decrease because I had two retirements in, in finance this year. And so I don't have anyone in finance now that's contributing to the pension so none of that 18% increase is allocated to finance. So what that does is you'll see large D, and this happens with the smaller departments because you've got three, four, one, two people that are in the pension. So you'll see some large decreases like in finance and IT because in both cases, we went from two and one employee in the plan to none because of retirements this year. Um, so what happens? Anthony's department has to pick up the slack because he's he's the only you know he's he's in the pension plan. So we're still allocating pension cost to fire marshal, and so it's not only the eighteen percent increase that fire marshal's absorbing, but it's the fact that now finance and IT don't have any allocation. They've, so we went from probably twenty thousand dollars or so of cost last year to zero in finance. So that has to be made up. In, and again, it, you, you'll see this in the smaller departments: large increases and, and some small decreases. But overall, and there's there's a worksheet up in uh, in the front of your books that shows all the pension allocations in one place, so you can see what that is. All right. Well, thank you. Right. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you. Um, I had two items. Uh, one, actually, Mary already touched on. Thank you, Mary. But the other one would be the overtime. I see. I'm looking at the past numbers. Where do we? How do we come up with the 2,500? And, and why is it such a drastic change from 1920? Um, the 1920. That's what was actually spent. It's been um, 2,500, I think, for the last seven or eight years. So as you look to the left on that um, on that sheet, the previous years, that's the money was actually spent. So there's always been $2,500 in the account. Very rarely do I use all that. I actually have the option of using comp time or overtime. So okay. most of the time I do use the comp time over the overtime. So overtime is just there pretty much as a cushion? Um, well, again, the, the agreement we have through our contract is I can use either or when I have to work more hours. So when it's something planned, I pretty much just use comp time. If it's an emergency, like on a Saturday night, I'm out for a couple of hours at a fire or something, that's when I use the overtime. That's also a good reflection on our activity. 
uh, that 1920, I'm sure if we pulled the statistics, we probably had very few fires that year. So I probably wasn't needed as much. Okay, thank you. And we have to be careful with that because we have to remain in compliance with the Fair Labor Standards Act in terms of overtime versus comp time and um, how we balance it. So it's, it's a tight rope, it's a thin rope we walk. Thank you. But that is a number we could see decrease in an actual. We would see 2,500 from adopted 2021 be an actual to be more in line with you know the other. Well, maybe not the 317, but closer to actual 17, 18, 18, 19, roughly yeah. around 100. I think that's I think that's weird based off of what uh, Deputy Mayor said earlier seeing uh, maybe a line next to us saying where we currently are. So you kind of have an idea of this is what we wanted, but this is where we are to look at next year. But that, that pretty much is what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah. so far I can tell you through, the, through this budget year, that's probably, there's been very little spent in overtime only because most of the um, serious structure fires we've had happened in the daytime when I was working. So again, it, it's, you know, there's no, there's no real predictor there, you know, we had a fire about three years ago that happened on a, a Sunday night and uh, the next day was MLK day. So it was a holiday the next day. So we actually, I was there for about 17 hours. So unfortunately that one just, uh, you know, that one cost a little bit. Roger. A holiday, you know, it just, again, it just depends. Lately the fires have been occurring on, um, you know, during the daytime when I've been on duty. Mm -hmm. Trust me, every time it snows on a Sunday or Monday holiday, I'm thinking the same thing. There you go. <laughs> yep. Okay. Any other questions for Anthony? Uh, I got Tom. one more, Mike. If you could. Um, Anthony, uh, a few years ago, there was a discussion about, um, <clears throat> you know, you spend a, a huge amount of your time, I believe, on uh, reviewing uh, building plans for new construction and things like that, right? Mm -hmm. There was a discussion about possibly charging a fee to the applicant for your work. I was wondering, you know, just ballpark, do you have an idea of how much of your time you spend on that versus all your other uh, duties? Um, I'm looking at the numbers now, and I'm just going to ballpark it. Um, between code research and reviewing plans or whatnot, I would say it's about, actually it's in the narrative. I think it's about 15 to 20% of the time of my time is spent doing that. I know we talked about it probably four or five years ago and the previous town manager was against it. Right. Um, if we wanna do something like that, I believe we have to create an ordinance because the state does allow municipalities um, to charge for fire marshal services. So that would be plan reviews, certain inspections we can charge for. Um, the only problem would be, would be the clerical side of it. I don't know who's gonna, you know, the billing department has staff that, that takes in all the revenue, that processes the permits. So right now I just work off of their permit. So I sign off that information is sent to me. So we'd have to come up with a game plan who's gonna actually physically take the money because I'm not always here. My office is not manned. Um, eight right. hours a day, like the other offices are. My my thoughts. I'm were, not against it. I think it is a good idea, but I think logistically, it, there's a lot to talk about how it would work. Now, my thoughts were like you would tie it in with the building permit. You know, like there would be so much for construction, so much for, you know, uh, fire safety or whatever you would call it. Um, would you happen to know if uh, any of the surrounding towns charge? Yeah, I believe uh, quite a few of them do. I believe West Hartford does. I believe Manchester does. I think Hartford does. I know there was talk in Glastonbury about doing it. I don't know if they ever did do it, but I know there's several, I think a lot of the um, towns down in um, Fairfield County down there do that because I've just gone on their website to look at things. And so there are quite a few towns that have established it but a lot of places are bigger offices where they have the support to do all that but again if 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 we want to look into something like that we can i can um, do the research and again i think the biggest issue is just um trying to figure out logistically like you suggested if it comes into the building department or whatever you know we'll have to figure that part of it out thanks Anthony. 
Any other questions? Uh, seeing none, thank you, Anthony. Thank you. We got Steve Bailey up next. Oh, can you hear me now? Yep. All right. Uh, good evening. There's some new counselors here that I haven't met yet. Um, hopefully we can do so soon once this craziness is over. Um, for those who don't me, I know me, I'm Rich Bailey. I'm the fire chief, uh, also the assistant director of public works down at the garage on Marsh Street. Um, as far as the budget this year, it, it is it mirrors last year. Uh, I didn't go up in anything. I literally moved numbers over. Uh, I can certainly make it work. Um, the town manager did make some additional cuts uh, already. So, you know, to go through line by line and, you know, just to, to jump ahead of you, Deputy Mayor, if I may, <laughs> you know, it's a couple hundred here, a couple hundred there, honestly. It's, you know, we're, we haven't gone up in, in quite a few years. My, my additions are in utilities. Um, waters is just gone out of its mind, the cost for water. But um, I mean, really it's, it's a zero with the exception of utilities. Not a lot of fanfare. Can you use less water? <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you, it's it, the amount of, it's just crazy. It's, you know, the, the numbers we have to put and what they do is we, we pay for MDC to maintain our hydrants. Uh, that's a huge cost and, and continues to rise. Um, I get it, it's business, but you know, that's where that's where my additions are. There's no other additions. So, um, Rich, the first section, of, uh, second section, office, machine, am I in the right thing here? Fire suppression. Are we saying that there's no, no spending on all those columns for prior years? Um, let me, for, what, what number are you on? Are you on? I'm on page two of... Uh, Oh, page two. Fire suppression. No, that that would probably be incorrect. Um, Mike O'Neill did sit down. We've had two discussions already, and these lines are going to change in title, not in dollar to, to update. And, you know, a lot of these are, um, uh, you know, continued, but some of them are, and we're going to we're going to recalibrate the lines. We, we just don't. We don't break out the actuals by the, you know, budget subcategories. We just pick up the total for the account on the shaded line. Well, we can do that if you want. I'm just like uh, the air pack flow testing, for example. Mm -hmm. Is that the same that we spend every year? It's just not reported here, or uh, within within a couple hundred. You know, it's not thousands. It's that's that's a it's a close ballpark figure. Okay. You know, it depends on the age of the packs, the age of the bottles. You know, that type of thing. Um, there was some conversations I had about air packs. Mm -hmm something as far as replacing them all or something like that? Yeah, we actually have a grant in right now and are waiting to hear back from them. Uh, it would be in the neighborhood of about 450,000 to replace the air packs that we have now. Replace all of them? Yeah, we did it. We got this grant in, don't kill me for the amount of years, I'm a horrible judge, but I think it was about 15 years ago, we got this grant. And, uh, and it was back then, it was about the same price. It was 400 plus. So it is, you know, that would be a 10% match, but uh, it is a huge savings. And are those um, air packs like life limited? So after a certain point in yes. time, they expire? Yes. Okay. Yep. Uh, the other question I had, same conversation was about hydraulic tools. 
Are you okay? Are you asking for money for new hydraulic tools or? Uh, yes, um, me and Mike are going through some numbers now to um, see if we can do that out of this year instead of moving forward with the CNEF and, and other budgets. Um, and again, we've met twice. We're going to continue to meet and try to do as much of that as we can out of the existing budget. So that that line item is in the CNEF, right? So uh, we're I, I believe... <laughs> It is right, Mike. It is. Yep. Okay. I can put that up if you, if you'd like, if everyone would like. I just uh, you'll bear with me for a moment. <clears throat> you'll find it in your. There's a, a tab in your book. Second section. Called transfers out, and it's yeah, the, yeah. It's the third page of that section. So what we're, what we're always looking at is just the operating budget and then any purchases are elsewhere, right? Is that how it works? I'm sorry, are you asking me or Mike? Mike. <laughs> it's, it's a bit of a balance, to be honest. You know, in areas like uh, townwide radio, you'll see a little bit of equipment in both. You know, we have a, uh, uh, same with IT you know, where we have an equipment budget in the department, you know, we, and, you know, what we put in the department tends to be kind of more of a consumable nature, if you will, you know, um, and then some of the bigger uh, items, you know, that maybe we, we pay for over two years or something like that, we'd put in CNEF. Want me to put that chart up? Uh, I don't need it. Maybe anybody else wants to look at it. It's fine. I just and Mike, I was just trying to look for it. Where was it again? Second Maybe. section. Oh, good. Gary, if you give me a share, I can do that. But it's in the uh, mayor. It's in the transfers. Is one of the tabs. Transfers it's out tab. You said the third back. page. Okay, got it. Third page, transfers out. Yep. Right now, Mike. So if everybody can see that, that's the table there. Um, so, Chief, we have two items uh, in CNEF. 40,000 for the rescue tools, That's, that was the pump. And then uh, the bottles, 15,000 for the bottles. Mm -hmm. So the 15,000 is to purchase a few of them, is that? Or yeah, to... it's, you know, it may be a coordinated effort with a couple of uh, packs as well. Oh. I, I didn't want to load that because you know, there'll be a sticker shock w without question. You yeah. know, if we had to fund it ourselves, you know, we're really, you know, we hired a grant writer. We've, we've done the right things where, you know, we should really be in the running for this grant. So was the purchase, I hope the purchase date of the air packs was staggered. So it's like, they're not all going to drop dead the same year. Is that correct? Well, that is, that is incorrect. When the state gave the, the uh, bid or the uh, grant again, 15 years ago, you know, they give it to you and you basically have, you know, a very short period of mind uh, time to, to, to buy your equipment. <clears throat> so that does in one, it is bittersweet in one way it's great. And in the other way it sets, you know, future, future chiefs and the department and a council and in a bind. What we'll do, though, if we are successful in getting the grant, is have a process by which we begin to replace these at a certain period out, so a percentage mm -hmm. gets absorbed. My, my concern is the other side. What, what would be the game plan if we don't get the grant? Are we going to have a four hundred thousand dollar bill next year? Or? No, we're we're a couple years out, so we'll probably. 
you know, split it, third it, quarter it the best we can, you know, and, and without question do uh, do some creative budgeting. And then just one more question and I'll be yep. quiet. Yeah. The 40,000 for the hydraulic pump. Mm -hmm. That is, that is a half. Does that half solve all your problems or do you still need a lot more uh, hydraulic equipment? Well, <laughs> nothing solves all the problems, but what it's going to be is it's going to be a, uh, a, what's called a hybrid system, which is going to contain e-tools, electric, literally battery run tools and hydraulic tools. Right now, the rescue truck has two hydraulic pumps. It'll have one new one, uh, some tools that go with it, and then e-tools, which we already have on uh, two of our engines now. And for, you know, for those who don't know, the e-tools are the, the spreaders, the jaws of life, if you will, and uh, cutters. Thanks, Rich. You're welcome. Yeah. Hey, uh, hey, Rich, just real quick question. Is it safe to say that you basically came in with a zero budget with the exception of the water increase? Um, I don't want to say with the exception of water, but yes. Okay. I mean, that the short answer is yes, absolutely. There were a couple more cuts that I can uh, certainly survive without question, but yes. No, thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. I just have a quick, um, I just wanted to clarify something. Um, so the two items that were um, in the CNEF, the hydraulic pump and the air bottles, are mm -hmm. so you intend to um, use money like in your current budget to pay for those. So we'll be removing them from CNEF, is that correct? That is 100% my intent. Me and Mike are, are trying to make that work. We've met a couple times, um, you know, to, to, I guess the answer it's short would be, you know, that that's definitely our intent and you guys will be the first to know if we can, if we can manage it and take it right off the, take it off your plate. Okay, that's great. And then I, I just have an, another question and I don't know if this would be for you or Mike, but um, so, you know, under the additional information that sort of lists the actuals, um, what, Per, you know, amount of the budget's been spent out. Mm -hmm. um, I know you said the water charge is what's really going to be going up and or has gone up, but it looks like in, in the, um, it's saying that you've barely spent any of your water charge. Like the water charge is very low, like the, as far as the actuals for this fiscal year. Um, I don't, I don't that's a mistake or. No, I don't have the actuals, but the, um, and Mike, you'd know better. There's, there's in like an eighty thousand or a hundred thousand dollar payment that goes towards our hydrants, yeah. and it may it may be in two. Go ahead, Mike. MDC bills the hydrants once a year ah, in, okay. in June. Oh, okay, okay. There you go. All right, thanks. Brian. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, uh, Gary, I think this is for you and um, for Chief, but. Um, as far as training um, and the physicals line, I know these are important topics, but I do see that they were reduced. Will that, uh, that will, will that affect you all with reducing those as far as maintaining your training requirements and the physical requirements for the annual physicals? Uh, the annual physicals, you know, again, that's a number that's, that's hard to put a hard number on because say if we take three in and lose four or take three in and lose five, take five in, we'll only lose one. That number fluctuates. Um, it's definitely survivable. Um, it was what, 2000? I'm just trying to find yeah. the line. It was 2000. On, on both lines. I just want to make sure that it's not something that is important enough where it will tie your hands up in the department. No, not in again, in a normal year, maybe, but I think in a normal year that, that Gary wouldn't have taken it from training. Um, you know, we're still, we're still going to have COVID restrictions. There's still going to be some training and conferences we can't do that are, that are just not going to be offered because of the current COVID situation. Um, you know, I think that's that's very survivable. If something drastic were to happen, I mean, I could certainly have talk to Gary and we could work it out. Roger, thank you so much. All right. 
Matt. Thanks, Mayor. Hey, Chief. Hey, Matt. Um, on the <laughs> I'm going back to the water. I, I, it looks like it went from eight uh, three years ago eighty thousand to one hundred eighty thousand down to sort of this one eleven one twelve that's being recommended now. Do you know what the push for the hundred eighty thousand was? Uh, you know, twenty four months ago. I honestly have no idea there. I don't know how they set their rates. I, I, I honestly, I can't answer you. I'd, I'd be making something up. Okay. Can, can, I know. Know. Mike, can you help me out? Uh, that was, I'm trying to look at two screens at once here. Um, <clears throat> that was in 19. That was when the MDC arbitrarily decided to bill in advance instead of in arrears. So we had to pay two bills in two one. years. Yep. No, well, that makes sense. Okay. But then it also looks like 112 was paid either the following year or the 80 in the previous year. So did it come out, did it come out of fiscal or 17, 18? And then that's why the 17, 18 looks comparably low. No, it runs, it's, it runs historically 80 up, to 100, you know, it's increased from 80, you know, it was 82, 83 in 1718. Let me just do this so we can all see it. So 82, 83 here, 90, 90. So we paid two years and then it went up from 90 to 111. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, if you pay two years, then the year that you paid for should be a lot less, but I'm not seeing that. No. it. it, it Maybe I'm misunderstanding clearly. Yeah, because we we were paying. I'm not trying to get the timing in my head. We they basically wanted an upfront payment for the next year, every year thereafter. So really, we're we're we're, we're still front. We still have a credit somewhere. So if you no, there's no credit. It's a, it was a cash flow deal for the MDC. They just they just paid, they wanted their money at the beginning of the year instead of the end of the year, essentially. Okay. And is that uh, is that a statutory thing, or could you say no? We'll just, just do it like we always done it for 150 years. No, we 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 paid it. They sent us a bill and a second bill, and we paid it. Okay. But where did we see the reduction? Wouldn't we have seen a reduction? No, because we're paying for the next year, so they just want us ahead, just like you work and you get paid two weeks later. That that's what they're having us do. So how how do we know if we're paying if we're paying for the amount of water we're using? I guess we're not. We're front paying. Well, we we pay for capacity, right, Chief? I mean, it's just this is just this is just pressure at the hydrant. It's 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 per hydrant. So there there's a formula. You just count every hydrant, multiply by 120 or what have you, you know, per hydrant, and that's what we pay. There, there's a separate water charge for hydrants than there is for the firehouses. And I'd have to see if that comes out of the same line. That could reflect some of it. But I would. That'd be pretty small compared to the. Yeah. yeah. I, think, I think it's actually shown on that water line, the, the difference between the general administration and each company. So it, it does look like it plays out to another $12,000 on top of the hundred, at least for the. That, uh, that sounds about right. So, um, you know, here's an interesting question. We. We recently had a similar situation with the electric company where we bought all the lights and we found out that we could do it a lot cheaper than they could. Is that a, something that we can do with the hydrants now? And it was the same concept, flat fee, count the lights, didn't work out. And over time we bought the lights. Can we buy the hydrants? I, I would say no. You know, there's, there's probably, you know, I'd have to look at the exact numbers, you know, 500 hydrants or whatever, you know, you get, three breaks or, you know, three or four breaks in a year. I mean, that, that's a, we could fix them, but you know, that takes, it's time consuming. It's, I don't think it works right now, but I could certainly investigate it. Uh, just on a side note, company one, their water bill reflects the gardens as well. The gardens runs off the firehouse. Right. So if you if you were to look at an actual and then go through the summer months, there'll be a jump. That's why. Thanks for that heads up. And my next question is really about the you know fire company. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen different areas around the town where they're struggling for recruitment. 
So how how are we how are we doing? And do we have to start maybe allocating any resources for, you know, getting you know getting recruitment right? Those types of things. We want to make sure we have a healthy healthy force. Yeah, no, and we do have a recruitment line, and uh, you know I'm in the going to start the process very soon of hiring the PIO, which is in charge of recruitment and retention. Um, it, it's steady. Last year, I mean, last year's just anomaly. It's you know, some people were coming out, not staying. Some people were just not staying, but said, hey, you know, it's something I may want to do. You know, would I love 25 more and have to go to Gary for permission to get more? Absolutely. But I think nationally, it's, you know, it's an issue everywhere. You know, are we that short-sighted where, you know, bad things are going to happen? No. But it's going to have to be a, a conversation that starts being had and in very near future years. But this year is not that year, you think, in your opinion? No, no, not as far as like a paid staff or like a part-time or, you know, uh, an hourly thing. I don't think we're there yet. Yeah, I mean, I, I wasn't really going that way where that location in my mind, I was thinking yeah. more, you know, do you have, you know, do you need resources to do outreach, right? I, I was driving through Simsbury the other day and I saw all kinds of signs that were put up, you know, come come be with the fire department you know we you know we can train you and blah 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 you know that that type of outreach that's for a volunteer fire yeah but but yeah. still like you still got to get the word out like this is an option to volunteer back with your town and be part of a community all that good stuff mm -hmm. right develop character all those things yeah mark mark did have a good program with that uh not last summer but the summer before and and again, I hate to keep using it as a crutch, but with the with the COVID, there, the people just weren't out. There wasn't, you know, it wasn't good money to go out and invest that year, but we're going to move forward with it starting very soon without question. Okay. Thanks for the heads up. Anybody else? Um, I just had a quick question. It may seem trivial, but... Mm -hmm. Uh, the awards dinner last year, was that canceled? Yes. Because of COVID? Yes. So is that a carryover for the awards dinner of $4,000? Yeah, it's, it's always, it's always, it's got its own line. And, you know, again, this year, it's usually in May. So we've, uh, we've obviously canceled it for this year. We may look towards the fall to do something because it's been two years since we've recognized a lot of our individuals for their accomplishments. Right. Yep. But for that line, that so I guess this is a question from Mike. Would that line uh, for the awards dinner be a zero because we have the four thousand already out, uh, not allocated for it? But I guess yeah, maybe allocated already for it. No, because it uh, the the operating budget lapses. Lapses. So we got budget for that again. And it would be any funds not expended in the 21 budget are available, you know, would either lapse to fund balance or um, as the council has done in the past, they've uh, <clears throat> transferred all or some of that to various projects, reserve accounts, and things like that. Gotcha. One thing we have to check. Uh, Mike O'Neill, and I can't recall, was that removed from the budget last year or was that? We did that have line it. was not, re it was not removed. That Okay, so it was adopted as? Uh, yes, okay. yep. We got one more. Okay. I, I get to ask all the ugly questions. <laughs> uh, is there any money in for uh, vehicle maintenance? in your budget or is that no. no that comes out of public works now we have maintained i do have the five was it five two two seven five i <laughs> have some but there's also a repair budget that comes out of the garage that says diesel go under that one so, i'm sorry <clears throat> two seven five is diesel fuel it says repairs and maintenance and then it says diesel fuel yes yeah, okay. is vehicle and property the five two two seven five Okay. And then as a piggyback to that question, what what's happening with uh, engine 11? Is that going to impact our budget this year? 
Oh, absolutely. Um, I, it is uh, in need of major repair. Um, I have spoken with, with Gary and Mike O'Neill on two occasions. Um, I still have uh, one more piece of information to get to Mike O'Neill, but um, it is definitely something we're going to have to have more than just a, you know, a five minute zoom talk about it's, it's extensive. Okay. That's it for me. Thanks, Rich. Okay. On a high note of a major repair and costly. Thanks. All right. Good way to leave that one. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Okay. Thank yeah. you. All right. Thanks, Rich. Sally just came on. Sorry, we're, we're running about 20 minutes late, but. Well, we can make it real fast and we could just say, okay, and move on. <laughs> Maybe the deputy good. doesn't have any questions for you, Sally. <laughs> <laughs> All good. Yeah. We're friends. Um, do you want me oh. to? Just start with the lift. Let's get it over with. <laughs> I just. Um, last year when we, when we met, I kind of went by line by line. I know it was a lot, but I think it helped give a clear picture of both the public works and the school side of the department. Um, I don't know if you want me to do that or if there's some other um, way you want me to, to start. Um, I can kind of go through it. We also, you know, similar to the fire department, we really did, there are certain line items that we decreased some that we, the majority of which we stayed the same. Um, and where we've gone up, we, most of it has been contractual. So, um, you know, if you, if you, the first, obviously the first few lines, the salaries, we just over time, those are all contractual agreements. We have settled, but have not signed off on the 130340 contract, which is the, we are going to, they're making, we're literally making minor changes, um, typos and things like that to the contract, but they are set to sign that. Um, and then any of the increases in that contract are in line with the 818, the 408 and the other contracts that have been settled this year. So if you start going down into 52212, um, we have reduced the line items for, for some of the training, staff travel, licenses, licenses and trades. Um, as you go down um, into professional services in two of the line items, the first one and the second one, the BOE train agreement and water treatment, we had spent the money last year, but we were still learning about the, the school budget. And so those expenditures were actually captured just under the maintenance line when really it should be under the professional services line. So this year we pulled it out of maintenance and put it into the professional services, which is why you see a $10,000 jump in both of those line oh. items. The, um, the train agreement, our chillers, especially our big chillers, which is our air conditioning equipment at the high school, um, are under, under this agreement. Um, and as far as the water treatment goes in the schools, we have had to test for lead, copper, and other uh, minerals. And so that is where we use that money for. Um, the next couple of lines, consulting and weather, have stayed the same. Um, where you see fire and fire monitoring intercoms, the majority of that, uh, the $8,000 is the part of the fire monitoring that we pay per building that is under the Board of Ed contract with Sonatrol, because all of the Board of Ed buildings do have alarms. Um, large equipment repairs, again, we have, um, we have moved that money back into where it should be, which is in the repair budget. Um, HVAC and plumbing repairs, that's where uh, we have one plumber on the Board of Ed side and one plumber on the, the public work side. 
Um, there are times when we have to call in plumbing services. Um, and when we do, this is the, the monies we've put in. Last year, our plumber in the Board of Ed side um, was out for a significant period of time due to some severe health issues. And so we had to rely on professional services to get that work done. Um, and so that's why you see that number on that line item. Um, Sonitrol, again, overall, um, fire monitoring is separate from the Sonitrol burglar alarms that we have at the schools. And we moved that money from repair and maintenance into Sonitrol, um, which is where it should be. We get charged almost 20, little over $21 a month um, for each, uh, for each school and building, Stillman, um, and then the high school is multiple. Um, we get charged on a couple of different um, phases in that school, in the schools. Uh, consultants training in asbestos, we have stayed the same. Carpet replacement, we have gone up a bit. A lot of the schools are really tired. We have tripping hazards. So we did put in um, $500 more for there. Contractors, sidewalks, lawn, snow, board of ed, school do. The biggest jump in that is our, our percentage of the board of ed's work order and classroom scheduling and building scheduling programs is $7,500. And so again, we moved it last year from maintenance to where it should be, which is in professional services. So that is the, that is the school side of the work order program. They use school due. Whereas on the public work side, we use facility due. And no facility due and school due do not talk to one another. They are separate entities. Um, and the Board of Ed holds the contract for the school side. We own the contract for the town side of that. Um, going down the line in custodial services, exterminating, cleaning, we have stayed the same. Um, water charges, which are contractual. Um, some mm -hmm. of the um, electricity charges, we have. Um, the town manager has reduced the Board of Ed. We are continuing to try to do LED changeouts. We're working with a lighting consultant now to try to get more and more. Um, I will tell you that probably this year, we've been contacted by no less than 50 consulting firms mm -hmm. wanting uh -huh. to come in and um, do lighting uh, changeouts and things. And in a school and with the schools, that's not an easy thing to do. And also changing lighting in classrooms and teaching spaces is a very um, touchy subject for a lot of teachers. However, there is a facilities committee as part of the Board of Ed and it's something that I've approached them with. Um, and so at some point this year, and I can, Gary can talk to it also, we are, um, potentially looking at doing an RFP to see for a consulting, have one of the firms come in, present, or not one, but um, give the 50 plus that we've dealt with an equal footing to put forth their best programs um, for us. Um, pools. Um, for electricity, as we all know, you have to, you have to heat the pools, otherwise, people freeze. Um, natural gas. Um, and Sally, that might happen. Yep. Sorry. Go ahead. That, um, is that just the high school pool for the heating of the pool? Will or yes. doesn't get does yes. it? Yes, that is the heating of the heating of the high school pool. Gary is there, yeah. Yeah, I was shaking my head. Yes, that's just the. Yes, that's pool. just the. Yes, <laughs> like that's Willard and Willard and and Millwoods are not heated. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thirty-two. It takes 000. a lot of electricity to um, to heat almost five hundred thousand gallons of water. 
to sit. Uh, I believe that racing temperature now is 77, something like that. But we usually have to keep it around 78, 79 when the barracudas and when the older population utilize the pool. Um, and we didn't. I'm sorry, I'm not on video. You don't need to see me eating my ice cream dessert. That's okay. <laughs> Well, um, not last year you were eating ice cream too. No sharing. <laughs> and well, I'll, you don't need to see how much ice cream is in it too. Um, but did we? And we closed. We didn't have people in the pool, but we had to continue. Obviously, you have to continue to main, maintain it. But we, do we need the heat to maintain the chemical balance? Yes, but the school, when school went back into session, they started, you know, they, they used, um, they used the pool. But you also cool. do have to keep, you have to keep it at a certain level. Um, yeah, I guess. This is, had... you know, again, this is for what would be a normal year, a normal school year. Mm hmm Okay. Um, moving down into the, the, the heated conversations about trash, um, Paynes has a 1.5% increase in their contract. So that um, does show um, an increase for next year for residential collection. That is the cost of picking up the green barrels, um, bulky, bulk waste um, and transfer collections. Um, the, the transfer station roll off is went up slightly. Hazardous waste we have kept the same. Um, going on to the next page, recycling. Um, the cost of paints picking up the blue barrels got, uh, goes up about $5,000. Uh, the MSW, the re refuse disposal, the MSW tonnage, um, we, ha we have reduced the original number um, over in that, in that section. Um, catch basin cleaning um, and inspection. We added monies last year for pipe inspection as per the engineering department, so we've kept that in there. Uh, we have decreased the crane rentals uh, last year. We always do keep some in in case we have to move equipment onto or off of a roof. Um, fence rental, we went down the year before. We had had, to, um, we had had to rent fencing because we needed the temporary generator at the high school. Um, the web and high crest rentals are the containers that they use for storage. Their storage was taken away by the educational uh, occupants of the school quite a while ago. Um, and so when you drive by high crest or web and you see the storage containers, that is what that's for. Street sweeping went out for bid and was $30,000. And same thing with the emergency um, Pipe clean out if an inspection warrants it. Um, so we've put a thousand dollars there. So that has remained the same. Same thing with replacing computers and printers. Um, pool maintenance that is um, for the summer pools. Those are not the BOE pools. Those are the Willard and, and Millwoods pools. Um, lighting repairs. Year to date, we're actually um, slightly above the $36,000 mark um, with Higgins. Um, we have had to replace um, some of the wood poles in the southern part of town. And Higgins has um, charges for that. We've also been charged so far, we've been charged almost $12,000 by Eversource for every time they come out and they turn the power off and then they turn the power back on for Higgins to make the repairs on lights or poles. Um, our elevator contract has stayed the same, vehicle repairs, 
motor repairs, hardware, um, repairs and maintenance, the Board of Ed, we decreased, um, it's not really a decrease of $20,000, that's the 10,000 for the train um, agreement and 10,000 for the um, testing that was on page one, that I said we moved from the maintenance account. Filters for the Board of Ed, you see $30,000. Um, one of the agreements, you know, the, the high school alone goes through filters and it's crazy. And now with COVID and the fact that we've had to do more filter changes, we believe that we're going to continue to have to do those um, accelerated filter changes at least through the next year. Um, we've Stayed the same for upkeep, boiler repairs, painting. Um, when you get to the fuels, remember that unleaded, the contract is on a calendar year from January to through December. And so you'll see the numbers um, where, where we are um, locked in for part of what would be this fiscal year's budget. And then we have to estimate what the what we think it will be from to make up the the other time since it's since unleaded it is on a calendar, not a fiscal year. Um, diesel is on a fiscal year, so <coughs> and we we've locked in on that. It makes it much easier. Um, then pest control, custodial supplies um, have gone up. A lot of the supply houses ran out of regular custodial supplies with COVID. Um, what they are starting to get back in, they have seen some price increases, um, but we're trying to keep that in check as much as possible. Um, pretty much we've stayed the same in cleaning and household supplies, um, tree climbing equipment. We've gone down a little in Board of Ed clothing allowances because we have not had to, uh, we haven't had the turnover that we've had before. Um, and then there's the contractual monies for boots, clothing, uh, rain gear, ear protection, um, a lot of the safety, the safety things. Um, for landscaping supplies, we have remained the same. Um, we have added in um, there are many times when Park and Rec requests for us once Millwood's pool is open to have it open for an extra week. So we budgeted in case that request does come through that it is there. Chemicals for the pool, again, um, what the, the chemical costs to open both Millwood's and Willard this year, we are estimating based on the new uh, pricing guidelines at $35,000. Um, vegetation, um, two treatments, this is all you're going into more of the, the, the spraying for mosquitoes, vegetation, corn fest and fireworks, both of those, if they happen, we spray for fireworks prior to that. We also do um, spraying in old weather field twice. Um, and we spray once for our before graduation, when graduation takes place outside. Um, we did reduce the larvicide. That is um, a treatment around bodies of water, around the reservoir and other larger bodies of water in town. Permitting, we have stayed the same. Um, and then on the next page, we have not gone up. Um, again, we've stayed the same in, in salt sealer, um, catch basins, other materials, traffic signs, um, police department signs. Um, we have uh, decreased the building supply budget. But again, we moved some up things to the appropriate line items on the previous pages for the schools. Um, we're still keeping money in there for building materials for the old academy and the Keeney Center. Um, and then going down BOE parts, those are things, you know, parts for equipment, whether it's the, you know, power washers or the ride-on um, scrubbers and things like that. 
um, parks department, small equipment, blowers and scrubber, um, chainsaws, any, any type of equipment is carried under that line item. Um, specialty repairs on trucks and hydraulic repairs, again, as Rich was saying, um, you know, there are certain things that we can't fix that we do need to send it out. Um, it's rare, but some on some of the fire apparatus, we do have to we do have to send it out. Um, and you see that you see that under um, maintenance for public vehicles. Uh, leaf leaf parts we've kept the same. Building a new leaf box, we do in house now. Um, our welder literally makes our boxes, so we're not out buying them. Um, you know, leaf parts, unfortunately, they, the machines, the, the sucking machines and things break down and it's a very labor intensive and expensive program. Um, same thing with, you know, snow removal and parts, 14,500 is what we put in because that's usually the price of a plow. If for some reason uh, we have a significant problem with, re with um, replacing a prop with replacing a plow, um, we went down slightly in you know administrative office supplies. Then the same for snow meals, mailboxes, um, cables, uh, trucks, diagnostic tools for the police cars. Um, we do have to keep the software up to date on the above ground storage tanks. Um, we do have money in there for the GPS system on our trucks, um, off-road software, um, the snap-on diagnostic tools, the fleet management software. Um, we have um, small equipment for Board of Ed. There are many schools that have window air conditioners and small heaters or vacuums and things like that comes out of that, that budget. Um, we are under contract with mechanics for tools, building safety supplies, we've stayed the same. Um, some of the other safety supplies, because we haven't had turnover, like in our tree division and things, um, we took money from there. And then the street lights, Mike and Gary can talk to um, as far as the payments go on that. And there we go. Okay. Thank you, Sally. Um, a lot to take in. Um, any questions for Sally? See you just it right out. I don't want to go first again. That's okay. Come on. Feel in the love. <laughs> well, <it's a> lot <laughs> of fun. Uh, you can't jump over the uh, dais and you know strangle them from. Uh, <laughs> no, from no, no, no. There's a, so, a healthy professional know. respect. <laughs> Ryan's got his hand up, so he can. I, I, um, I'll start on the first page. Okay. I was, I didn't understand contractor sidewalks, lawns, snow, and BOE. There are times when um, we will get a phone call from our code enforcement officer saying that sidewalks have not been cleared or that. Um, lawns are overgrown and we will hire a contractor if we um, because we're doing our own work to go out there we receive a bill we do pay the bill and then a lien is put on the property of the homeowner but we have to expend those funds to get that work done okay that, that's for residents though or businesses right but we don't do it, businesses why does it say board of it BOE. Well, okay, BOE school dude, that's the work order program. So if you look all the way to the right, that's $7,500 of the, of the $10,500. $7,500 of that is us to buy the work order module 
for the school dude work order program that is utilized by all of the schools. That's the work order maintenance program. Okay. So that the sidewalks and lawns is is three thousand dollars. I thought you were talking about one of the employees <laughs> talking about the school dude. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> no, we don't we don't um I'm not in the business of hiring dudes for the <laughs> I disagree. I'm pretty sure we have someone who works uh, who's on tree maintenance. That's he's totally. Yeah. Dude. Okay. Yeah, he's a dude. <laughs> but that's more like a hang hang ten dude. dude. <laughs> um. Let's see. Yeah. On the. Uh... <laughs> on the light repairs. Do we have any idea of how much? How many poles were replaced or lights were repaired? Um, right Maybe. now, I, I do have, um, and I can get for you because we're actually updating it. As we're waiting, actually, we're waiting right now on, we've repaired 10 uh, of the poles, 10 have been replaced. We're waiting on four more. Um, they have been backlogged as a, um, the vendor has not been able to get the product. Um, but I can get an actual itemization of that. We, I do then, have that for you. And then how many of them are for streetlight repairs on holes that we don't own? Or how do I say that? Yeah. We don't own the pole. We own the light, right? Right. So we're talking about the majority, the poles that have been replaced are the poles in the south side of town in those subdivisions, those wood poles. That's what we're talking about. Not that sure. um, we've been, I don't want to speak out of turn, but to my knowledge this year, I don't believe we've, maybe we had to replace one regular pole because of a vehicular incident, taking it down, something like that but the majority of the costs have been in those subdivision pole replacements. And then there's many street lights on poles that we don't own. Correct. And we, so I wanted to know how many street light repairs were done on poles that we don't own. And we still have to pay Eversource to cut the power before, we, before someone repairs it, right? Um, not always in that case. Um, they do, they sometimes can go out and just change a ballast without having to do all of the, the power. The majority of the power that we've been charged for has been on the wood uh, replacements or when they've gone out because a, a light and pole that we own, the light is out and they have to determine if the connections um, are, are working properly or if they need to be replaced. Okay. Um, there was a number of items that you talked about, uh, uh, air filters in the schools, mm -hmm. um, things like that. Uh, mm -hmm. Do we have an idea of how much money COVID is costing us? Yes, um, I can get you the, we do have a running amount that we've been sharing with um, finance but it's well over $40,000 from the start of COVID. And that includes PPE, cleaning supplies, filters. And not only um, physical services is the clearinghouse for all of the PPE and hand sanitizer and disinfectants for all of the buildings, including the Board of Ed, but not food service. So, you know, we, um, all of our staff or anyone in town hall, you know, any of the gloves, the, the disinfectant masks, um, all of that comes out of this office because we have the suppliers available to us and we can buy in bulk. And also, um, you know, we supply to the police department and also to dispatch. Um, and dispatch has had to use a lot of product because of the fact that they are in a shared space. Okay. And then skipping down towards the end, 
The um, the end end or the end of page one, sir? No, the end of page three. Okay. Uh, I evidently misunderstood. I thought we were cutting the GPS system out last year's budget. No, it's that's um, it's a very good tool for us, actually. Um, you know, it does allow us to um, find out how long it is taking on certain routes during snow. We do get people who call us and say, We're you know, your people are moving way too fast, we can go on there and say they're going at nine miles an hour. Um, or 17 miles an hour. And that has really proven to be very effective for us. Um, on occasion, in full disclosure, we have, you know, looked to see, you know, is, is a truck, um, you know, is a Board of Ed truck been at Webb for two hours? You know, why are they at Webb for two hours? Well, we can then find out and realize that the plumber was there and ended up having to cut a pipe and replace a pipe that he had not anticipated having to do. But we try not to use that um, in that capacity unless we really need to. So would you, would you say that the system's used on a daily basis or once a week or occasionally? Um, I would say we use it more in I would say the public works winter um, so that we can know how often and where the plows are and town manager. I will also chime in that during the winter I receive a number of phone calls of trucks speeding causing damage to uh, mailboxes and other property as a result of throwing snow because they're going too fast and uh -huh. at least four occasions that I can think of um, we were able to prove um, that wasn't the case. And we had one situation this year where, you know, thank God our guys are as good as they are. And gentleman was out plowing and a child went running across the cul-de-sac. And, you know, by the fact that he pays attention and, you know, was able to avert a situation and a parent, the parent called and we were able to track that, no, he was he was literally going at 11 miles an hour. Um, and so it has proven to, to be helpful for us. Is it in every day? No. But when we need it, we're really glad we have it. And then the question everybody's been wanting to ask, if you had to cut 3% out of your budget. Which is um, I have quite a list. If you want, I will, I'll read it down. Um, sure. 3% in our budget is approximately $325,000. Um, and we began by looking quite honestly at mosquito spraying and larvicide. Um, and again, this will not, um, at a 1% cut, we would, we would be looking at closing the Willard pool. In a 3% cut, for us, it would also be closing Mill Woods, uh, the Mill Woods pool. Um, mosquito spraying, you know, obviously cut out because we would be cutting out a pool, cut out the extra week of the pools. We would cut out computers, printers. Um, we would reduce school building repairs. We would take out the GPS, reduce town building repairs reduce our grass seeding program, um, reduce overtime in the Board of Ed, um, reduce some of the building supplies, not cleaning, but other building supplies, um, leaf box painting. We would um, do away with the vehicle software. Um, we would not be upgrading any park benches, fencing, anything like that. Um, and we would also, um, you know, cut out certain activities that we do to support um, the activities at Catone Field. So once we start going into 
any, you know, the 1% cuts, you know, we're looking at, at uh, some programs, 3%, we're affecting programs at this, at that point. We're affecting pools. We are affecting, you know, um, we would be reducing repair budgets on buildings that every day get older. Um, we already took, you know, and, and that's, that is hard and that will have an effect on the quality of life programs. No, I have to plow. You know, the, the town has a commitment to a leaf pickup program. I have to pick up the, you know, we, we're in a contract to pick up the trash. We try to get more and more people to come to the transfer station. Um, you know, we, we need to keep our buildings safe. We need to keep the, the school buildings safe. I know that there is a program out there to want to change the school buildings, but until that time, and in addition to that time, and I don't wanna to go too off track, there's a lot of facilities work in the schools. And for anyone, I have a long memory and you know we have embraced taking over the schools and, the, and incorporating the custodians. But one of the things that we said before we did it was that we don't know the condition of the schools because we were not in the schools prior to the time that they became part of the town and physical services. And so we thought we were gonna get a Pandora's box and we have. Because even on, the, even on the short side, we're looking at multiple millions of dollars of infrastructure repairs of the schools. Right. Do you have, do you have that list in a format that you could provide us with? Yes, I, I associated with you know each. Yes, it's in a spreadsheet um, yeah. that we will. I will make sure. I believe the. I believe the town manager already has it. We'll make sure that. Um, we'll make sure you do. Okay. Thank you. I have a quick question about. Um, you have like two trucks that you've requested that are is in the C and E F. Mm -hmm. um, a dump truck with plow and the F-350 with plow. Can you um, explain or try to justify those? Because that alone would be like- Right, and again, um, for, for full honest, for full disclosure, um, I put those in because I feel that we are already three years behind in our normal replacement schedule for trucks. We have an aging, um, dump truck that is rotting out we are maintaining it we're keeping it on the road but it is a race against time the engine in it was built in 2005 it's a sterling engine um on two occasions we had received um grants but didn't pursue them to replace the truck because it would have come under the the diesel um, the diesel sediment um, eventually that truck is going to die. Do I know in a crystal ball exactly when? No, I do not. We are keeping it on the road, but the cost of, of dump trucks, when you buy them new off the state contract is they are a 200,000 plus dollar situation. <laughs> We've even looked into buying a used, um, I'll call it the cab part. Um, and they are, sometimes they're out there, they're sold at auction. Can't always see exactly what part of the United States they're sold in. But even then we're looking at $100,000 of, and we would be able to, if we could get one, we could do a lot of the work ourselves to make it into the kind of dump truck we wanna be. But there we'd still be at a 10 year old vehicle. Um, but again, it is, it is an option that we've been trying to pursue, but because that type of vehicle is only available really in an auction situation, um, or any, obviously a used situation, unless you are ready to go in there and buy, they really don't want to talk to you. 
you know, you have to have the open checkbook before you can really make those kinds of decisions. But that is that is the, the cost of a replacement large vehicle at this time. The second, the transit van, um, and quite honestly, we had originally put in $36,000 um, for a van. The Board of Ed trades people utilize the vans to carry all of their equipment and supplies for all of the different schools. Unfortunately, the schools do not use all of the same types of supplies. So their vans really have a myriad of things in them. We are looking to replace a 2006 van that is practically unroadworthy. And we're just hopefully hoping to keep it alive until um, and until it dies. But it eventually, again, the Board of Ed in, had been replacing their vans, but then they stopped. And now it's been three years past and we haven't replaced anything there. And when we, when we took them over, again, we took over five aging, you know, five aging vans. And they did not, they never had an actual replacement program because just when they needed it, they went out and bought it. Okay, I, I, I you know, when you were asked about cutting 3% and you immediately went to closing pools, I mean, I'd rather pass on the trucks. And Honestly, because I thought those that would already have been taken out previously. Okay. And, you know, what I was asked to, to do a reduction of my operating budget. I don't consider CNEF part of my operating budget. So when I went through the exercise of a one and 3% cut, it was solely on my general fund program budget. Okay, okay. Um, and and um, something in the uh, capital improvement um, uh, fund about there is to um, rebuild the portables at- Yes. Um, at Charles Wright, and yes, and you you did a great job with the um, high crest ones. Is that what you intend to do? Yes, at Charles Wright. Yes, we have already um, gone out, and the structural engineer who performed his study on the high crest portables has already performed her study on the Charles Wright portables. Um, we feel that we would be able to do the same type of work there. The one caveat is that the Charles Wright portable will need um, a roof, which the high crest portable did not. Um, but we are confident that if we are given the go ahead um, with the budget adoption, that we could start that project as soon as school is done and have it ready for them as we did at high crest. We've already talked with our roofer. We've already looked at sourcing materials what the cost of sourcing materials would be, and our our trade staff would do the work, and we would utilize our some some of our summer help to be able to supplement and work with the tradespeople to do you know the cleaning and and uh, kind of the grunt work, but freeing them up to really do um, all of the all of the work that needs to be done the insulation and everything else. Um, I just have one more question. Um, sure. I know you mentioned some of your increased costs due to COVID, um, particularly with cleaning of the schools and the filters and whatnot. Um, is, is some of that are reimbursable, like through some federal, you know, federal money? I know there was some like CARES Act was reimbursing for some of the PPE or something like that, or am I, am I remembering wrong? The Board of Ed, and, and I'll leave this to, to Mike O'Neill and, and to our town manager, the Board of Ed did get some CARES money. They did use it to buy tables because they had to spread kids out in cafeterias and things like that. They have gotten some of the PPE, um, additional PPE things that teachers wanted that I said no to. Um, because a spray, for example, we have a spray disinfectant and paper towels, and that costs us a lot less than having a uh, thousand wipes 
in every classroom, but there are teachers who wanted wipes. And when we said no, the Board of Ed went out and, and used their money to buy them wipes. Um, but we keep a we have a running spreadsheet of all of the um, costs that we have incurred through COVID, and um, if there is a, if there is reimbursement and things like that, we work with finance to to seek those opportunities. Okay, and and, and I know that um, some of the ESSER funds that the Board of Ed has received are specifically designed to. Um, to pay for things like what you're doing to, um, for the extra cleaning and all this. I don't know if there's been any discussion with the board of it. I guess this would be more a question for Mike um, or Gary about um, if they would be willing to use some of those ESSER funds that are like specifically designed to pay for these COVID expenses regarding you know, cleaning, air filtration and all that, would they be willing to reimburse the town for some of the um, expenses that the town is is paying. Have you met Mike Emmett? <laughs> he doesn't want to give up a dime. <laughs> so no. <laughs> I mean so so there's those been are all good those are all good questions to ask. Yeah. Um, we're still especially with some of the funding, we're still waiting to find out what the rules are as to how we can use them and um, you know, I, I do kind of agree that um, that's a great question of if mm -hmm. the funding is, what's the intent and design of the funding and almost to have to get to that, that uh, the root of that, right? So if the intention is to reimburse towns for the amount of money it costs them to maintain the school and keep schools open, um, you know, that's probably a conversation that the council needs to have with the Board of Ed. Yeah, the word facilities is used a lot in the federal funding um, and then it's the definition of facilities as the town manager said between the town and the board of ed all right thanks ryan you had your hand up earlier yes thank you mayor um for one deputy mayor i think you're looking at my notes i think you brought up about four things i already wrote down so thank you for that um but to bring it back, I'm not sure if you touched this, Sally, but I'm showing that uh, five, 52212, travel training and dues. Yep. Uh, we went from 25,000 in the last year adopted budget to zero for this proposed. Is there a reason why that zeroed out for this year? I just wanna make sure we're, it's, we're not missing something that's gonna, you know- uh, in, I'm sorry, in 52212, five, First page, the um, large equipment repairs. Okay. Oh, we, so um, large equipment repairs, um, we feel that was for the Board of Ed. We feel that the regular repair budget will be able to, um, to support that if we need it. Okay. Okay. So, all right. Based on what we've been, sure based on what we have spent this year. Okay. I just want to make sure we're not setting ourselves up for uh, unforeseen uh, expense that will hit us right. later on. Right. Okay. Um, and then bringing it to the, um, the polls, the, the lighting polls that uh, Deputy Mayor spoke about. Yes. So we allocated, it looks like 36,000. Mm -hmm. So if we replace all of that last year or within this last year, we're expecting to possibly spend the same amount this upcoming year, or is that just a cushion that we're putting ourselves just in case? No, um, the poll rate, the, buying, the, the street, buying the street lights was a, uh, was a multi-phase program in that there are the traditional Cobra headlights that you see like on Wolke Hill Road. But in many of our residential, I call them subdivisions and, and I apologize for anyone who may live there who doesn't believe that that's what it is. Um, there are wood street lights, wood poles that are the street lights. We own those poles. And so it's a collective of 
having to repair or replace. And the wood poles are poles that were put in when those houses were built there and they are deteriorating. So, and when we originally started this program, it was recommended to us that we keep basically an endowment or a per pole price to pay for maintenance within any given year. Got it. All right. And the other things you already touched on. So thank you for that. Um, yes, that is all that I have. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions for Sally? Kevin. Uh, thanks, and Sally. I don't. I don't know if you could answer this because it's 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 comparable to a different department. But uh, when Rich Bailey was on, and we we're talking about uh, the increase in water um, that we have this year, he, his went up considerably. And yours remain your budget for water charge remain the same um, is the hydrants and everything or is that just an, an added fee or something that the town pays i can't speak to the hydrants all i know is that we based ours on um just consumption we'll see, yeah we're talking when you see the water charge 52252 a lot of that is based on the schools and this, the use of water in the schools. So that's where we're getting ours. Those are not hydrants. So yeah. I don't, I don't okay. know what the, I know that, my, I guess. Yeah, my, I don't know what the additional fees are that, that the fire department is seeing. I, I guess, I guess that was my question is, I guess it's more, I guess it's more of a question for Rich then is that if, yeah. if that charge is based upon just the hydrants or whatever fee that we, the town has to pay yeah. is increased or because it, he made it seem as though it had to do that. The price of water had increased dramatically. And so if that's the case, I figured it would be the same in, in either department. And again, I can't speak for the fire department, but MDC also is the one that supports their hydrants. And so any type of um, replacement or repair um, is done by the MDC. We don't do that. Okay. And they might be charging them for that. All right, thank you. I appreciate it. And that BOE water is, you know, sinks, toilets, showers, drinking locker, water. Yeah, I have drinking water, locker rooms, um, watering outside for all the fields. Um, you know, anything, any, any water inside the building, you know, and think about all the, you know, labs and locker rooms and sporting places and kitchens and all of that. Did we see any decrease in water consumption with the closures this time last year and the limited use of schools for the better part of the 2021? Yeah, it, we'd have to check the year to dates. Um, you know, going back the, the current bills, but again, we were looking at what would what would a full year look like? Mm -hmm. And I know in years past, when we redid the um, pool, you know, the insulation, we found asbestos up there, and then we put the sound barriers up there and, and new lighting up there. We had to drain the pool. We didn't have to drain the pool this year. No. We don't do that every year for no, me. No. No. Okay. Any other questions for Sally on this? Okay, we'll definitely have, I've noted some spots where we can go back to Gary with some of our concerns. Uh, one question I did have about mosquito treatment uh, did we spray last year in Old Weathersfield? I know we sprayed in Old. We sprayed in Old Weathersfield. Obviously, we did not have to spray for any events because we weren't having any events. Um, but we did spray in in Old Weathersfield. Okay. A couple of years back, when 
triple E was an issue, we did a second round. Yes. So, so, and something like that, we, we can't foresee. Unfortunately, we, we can't. Right. Okay. Can I just uh, perhaps help on the, the question about the uh, hydrant charges? Sure. So I think the question was 91,000 budgeted in the current year and 112 is the request. That 112 is really with an eye towards this number and what it was actually in fiscal 20. So a year ago, it was actually 111. When we were in, going through these exercises last year, we budgeted 91 and remember, so we're, we're doing this in April last year, April, May last year, and we don't get that bill until June, until a month later. So at this point last year, we didn't know what this number was. So we're always kind of chasing, you know, what we think it is. So that's, that's why, that's why this is increased to 112. And again, we've only spent 4,400 so far this year. Um, because that bill comes in June, the big one for the hydrant. And it's not, it follows a different schedule than the regular water consumption that households pay and businesses pay. It's a, it's a capacity charge. It's a, it's a charge for pressure at each hydrant. That's helpful. Th thanks, Mike. I appreciate it. And, and, and not only the capacity charge, is it the consumption that varies as well, or is it a myriad of things. There may be a consumption component, but with the hydrants, you're you're paying for, you know, pressure whenever you need it versus the how much you use when you open a hydrant. Gotcha. The primary charge, because that's again, that's MDC has to has to have that capacity in place, right? They have to they got to be ready wherever the need occurs to deliver right. you know, water at a high rate. It's like your bandwidth, your internet service. You have to have it right. available. And there's no meter on the hydrant system. It's the same system, just not metered. And if, if, I, if I may, just for a quick 30 seconds, I know that a lot of the budget needs to be cut. Um, I do want to advocate for something that Mike O'Neill has been trying to work on and that's the VoIP phone system. Um, the, the phone system at physical services isn't even the technology that the town hall phone system is. We literally are running on a discarded program, a, a, a discarded um, phone system from a company years and years prior to it. Literally, when it rains or we have really bad weather, we get static. Our phones are going down all the time. Um, and Mike's people have been, been great in trying to fix it. But um, it we don't have voicemail. We don't have call forwarding. We don't, people, uh, we can't, we have a, a, a recording on a line and um, trying to get an updated system that would, be townwide would be really helpful for us, especially when we're dealing with emergency situations, because um, this the phone system has failed on a number of occasions this year where we've just been down. And it's frustrating for residents because they'll call and they'll either get a busy signal or it will say, leave a message, but then there's no place for them to leave a message. And then they call the town manager's office mad that physical services is closed. Um, so if there's still a possibility for the phone system, it gets my vote. <laughs> Thank you for that. Okay. Anything else for Sally? believe it is our maybe our largest budgeted department so there is thank a, you everyone and if there's any other questions or anything else i can provide please let me, let me know okay 
Thank you. Will Thank do. You. Chief Satran is on. Yes, I'm on. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you, Chief. Okay, um, I'll just start off with um, the requested operating budget uh, exclusive of personnel expense is $575,868 and is only 5.29% of the budget's overall budget. This year, our non-personnel request has been has increased $71,799, but over half that increase, $40,400 is for shared services agreement with Newington for animal control services. And is partially set off by a reduction in the part-time ACO expense. In addition to this reclassified expense, the department is requesting an additional $31,399 to pay for services mandated by or in response to the new state laws to, um, and to make necessary technical technology upgrades and to replace failing equipment to cover the increased cost of supplies. Um, I don't know if you really want me to go into everything, but the new state laws, the police accountability bill is killing us. Um, we have to get every officer drug tested. We have to have every officer uh, psychologically evaluated and it's spread out over a number of years. We're doing it with at time of research, which is three years. So every three years, every officer has to go through this. Uh, we're, we have to change the way we do and the way we operate about solving crime. Um, we can't do the traditional ways of solving crime. We can't chase someone down anymore in the middle of committing a crime or whatever the circumstances are. So we're depending more and more on technology, which is beneficial for us in solving crimes. And we need more money for, for that. Uh, but we've kept the cost down uh, by offsetting other places. Uh, we have, the technology is, is really um, where we, we need to get a new uh, we have to get a new evidence refrigerator, has to be replaced. The unit that we have is 18 years old. It's well past its, ex, uh, its life expectancy and the plumber, town plumber has recommended a replacement and that cost is $4,200. Um, ammunition, nine millimeter ammunition, which we switched over to guns to nine millimeters to save on ammunition because nine millimeter ammunition is cheaper than the old 40 caliber but everybody and his brother wants a gun and is buying a gun is getting pistol permits uh and the cost and the supply is down and uh and ammunition expense has gone up almost three thousand dollars i i don't think you really want me to go line by line right um we have it in front of us uh, um if you want to touch on any additional high points that you have. And actually, before I do that, was any part of the police accountability bill um, deferred? Not so far. No. Everything is on schedule. They haven't deferred anything. The only thing that was deferred, uh, what was it, um, was the... Uh, was the consent to search? No, the, I'm sorry, the um, use of force uh, has been deferred until the officers can get trained in, because um, we have to change the training in regards to the use of force. Uh, you know, the last resort versus uh, all other measures expended before you can use deadly force. Okay. There's a lot of there's a lot of training that's going to need to take place, and that's still it. All it was it was pushed off a year, a year and a half. There are a lot of costs to that that unfunded, you know, to to the Police Accountability Act. The only thing I can say, and um, 
that a lot of costs that are that for other municipalities we've already taken care of because we already had the dash cams, we got the body cams, and we're CALEA accredited and state accredited. Those are huge costs to other departments, departments like Newington and Rocky Hill. Okay. Um, I mean, I'm just kind of going through them right now as we just got this today. So um, bear with me for a little while. Um, I mean, there's some new spending software, training certification, tracking software. Yeah, the, old, yeah the, the system that we had is 15 to 20 years old. Um, we've limped by with it for a long period of time, but it, it's not supported. It could crash at any time. We can't lose that data. So we needed, we needed to upgrade uh, we, uh, with um, NextGen, which is our RMS CAD. So we had to buy a module. So the problem though is that, and I don't know how we're gonna address it, is that they're not gonna be able to read the old, so it's probably gonna have to be manually put in but it was the only way that we could do it and not cost us a lot of money. Okay. Um, fingerprint background checks for custodians line 52230. That uh, went up four times. The, the thing is, is that the, the state came at us, collect NCIC saying that you can only do a background check with fingerprints. And we <clears throat> we have to do it on the Board of Education's fingerprint cards. And Gary might be able to answer this even better than me, but uh, uh, so we have to pay for those, those background checks with the state police. Yeah, the, um, the chief and I had figured out a way, I thought, we thought to actually save some money for the town, but it turns out the way the background checks actually uh, have to work for custodial or, or anyone working within the school, uh, according to the state auditor, it has to go through a certain program. So while the chief is able to, and the police department is able to do a background check on using, is it the collect system chief? I can't, the FBI system? Well, it's called triple I, yes. I, um, that can only be used for background for limited uses, including background checks for firearms, but not necessarily for hiring someone. So we've now figured out a way to absorb some of that cost or reduce some of that cost, but unfortunately, um, we, you know, we still have a charge added on there. I mean, the only thing I've noticed, and I can t attest to this, and you might be able to attest to this too, is the fact that the state is looking to save money every which way they can, and they're starting to charge us more and more fees that we weren't charged before. Hell, they didn't even charge, I mean, we didn't get charged for 20 some odd years for putting somebody into the police academy. Now it's up to $5,500 per candidate. that came from the state? Yes. See, way back when, I, and I was here at the time, uh, it was in the late 70s, I believe, that the state took all the, the money from the traffic tickets. Uh, and what they did was they, and they covered the cost for, for the police academy, they covered the cost for, um, you know, transportation of the prisoners and uh, housing, so on and so forth. Um, slowly but surely through the years, they've now transferred those costs back to us. Chief, with that being said, um, this is uh, Ryan Biggs. Uh, with that being said, I did see something on social media about recruiting for new officers. Um, yeah. Is that cost being associated with those new recruits for this upcoming mm -hmm. budget? Yes. Yes, that's in the, uh, the upcoming budget. 
we have to budget for polygraphs, for psychologicals. We have to budget for uh, the process itself to, to giving. Uh, um, we use the CPCA and, and um, police app, which saves us a ton of money because uh, the candidate actually pays for the test and uh, right. doesn't cost us anything. But and there are the a lot of other costs in regards to recruitment. We try. <laughs> We try to get certified officers, which saves us a lot of money because we don't have to put them through the academy. Okay, here we go. So, for, so you're, you're proposing for possibly two new candidates if they're not certified? Yes. Roger. Thank you very much, Chief. Okay, no problem. Anytime. Brian, which line are you, or which? Um, uh, yeah, 52205 is where it's at. 205. First page, about halfway down. Mm -hmm. Research, okay. No, research different. Oh. Recertification, every officer has to go through recertification every three years. Um, we have to pay for that now too. I have a question about ammo. Can I jump in there? Sure. Uh, <clears throat> I realize the majority of this is for training, I would assume. And uh, <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> yes, even the what, what kind of numbers does that represent? I have no idea what you know around ammunition costs and um, you have um, a schedule of training, uh, how much you know, what does each officer have to train, you know, once a year, four times a year? No, twice, we, we, we have, we certify the officers, we certify the officers in firearms twice a year, and once in the spring and once in the fall. Um, I'm, I don't know off the top of my head how many rounds that they go through, but I would have guessed that it would, to, to, to qualify that you would need at least a couple hundred rounds per, per officer. The, the one qualification course itself is 60 rounds right there. Right. So they would have to probably go through at least twice. And there's other training in regards to that too. Um, uh, you know, they have different setups, different scenarios, different ways of doing things. So we, so we stay uh, proficient in, in firearms. That's kind of a, an important aspect of so the, the majority of the cost increase is just the actual cost of the ammunition yes you're not you're not increasing training or anything like that just, no it's just the increase in the cost of, of the ammunition and it's almost like gasoline sometimes it goes up sometimes it goes down um you never know but it's it's a steady, a steady increase in the last couple of years because of uh, um, the supply and demand. You know, back when uh, the two wars were going on, we had a hard time getting ammunition. Um, but since the, you know, the scale back of, of uh, Afghanistan and, and especially with Iraq, um, the ammunition had come down quite a bit, especially nine millimeter. Um, so that was one of the reasons we needed to get new guns. And um, the way we did it was we, when we did with Glock, we switched to the nine millimeter because back to the nine millimeter because the ammunition was so much less money. 40 right. caliber was very expensive. Just just for my own education, does, does the ammunition expire? Does it have a life? Uh, we've never gotten to it. If it does, if we've never gotten to it, we go through it. So you you pretty much use a year's worth every year, you know? Yes. We okay. don't we don't hoard uh, ammunition and we do pretty much go through it every year. Thanks. No problem. Chief, is there a, a requirement that we train in firearms twice a year? Do other no, there is, the do requirement it? is once a year for certification. You have to, uh, we do it twice a year to make sure we catch everybody, you know, because some people are out for whatever reason. Um, 
and I want the officers to be as proficient as they can with uh, firearms. So it's it's important. It's not something you want to, um, and you can't lose one officer because his recertification depends on that firearms qualification. Um, I'm looking at line 53304, AED batteries of 1350. Do each of the um, vehicles have an AED in them? Yes. Is that what the cost is right there? Yes. And we didn't budget for it last year, it looks like. Are these? That's we, we had purchased those, oh, I'm trying to remember now, maybe, maybe two or three years ago, we got all of them and we got them into the cars, we got them into the building. Um, and now we need a, a replacement of batteries, you know, a schedule so that we can replace some batteries every year. It's not every one of them, I don't believe. What, no, what number was that? Uh, line 53304. Or, no, sorry, 53311. We had the wrong. It's the last item on 04. You're, you're correct, Mayor. Or, how did, Gary or Mike, just it's oh, you know what? Nope, it is one one. Sorry, sorry yes. about that. It reads the other way. Yeah, yeah, reads, uh, yeah you got to read everything and then get to the total. Yep. This is Michelle. I work with the chief um, operations analyst and worked on the budget. And um, the officer who does our medical, um, you know, he's the medical expert. He said our AEDs are, the battery life is running out and they need to be replaced. So that's the number that he said that we would need to replace. And we didn't need to replace them last year. So we put them in the budget. This year. I don't know how many are in cars or, or any of the, the details on that. I just know that that was the number that was recommended by the medical officer. Okay. Okay. Right. Thank you, Michelle. You're welcome. Yeah, those batteries are expensive, aren't they? Yes, they are. Yeah, they're... Of course, I, I would hope that the battery was uh, working correctly if someone wanted, needed to put one on my chest. Right. I agree with you. I was just going to say that. <laughs> and it, and, and, probably get going. You imagine going there to, to zap somebody and you hear. Psh. Right. <laughs> that happens next year. They'll put a sticker on my forehead and say, he cut the budget. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and that's the thing with emergency responding equipment. You, you need it to work. You can't gamble. You can't risk it. You, you've got to you've got to prepare in advance for it to work. Right. But they're not they're not inexpensive. But you know, I do remember this conversation actually, Chief, last year, and you know, it's kind of they they didn't have it last year, but they needed it for this year. Mm -hmm. Okay, anybody else? I mean, we're, we'll be taking, you know, deeper look into all these line items. And I think if we have any questions, we'll report back to Gary or Thank to the mic guys, on that. Oh, sorry, Kevin. Sorry, guys, but I ask one quick one. And it's, it's not part of, um, Chief, it's part of your, um, your general fund budget, but um, the uh, if you could just talk briefly about the uh, the three interceptors. I know last year the council, we, we didn't provide funds for uh, the kind of annual um, allowance, so to speak, for the cruisers. Could you just briefly just speak to kind of the need for them after we skipped a year? Yeah, I, uh, you, you, I, you, 
I don't even like the fact that it's three. We really need four. Um, the council way back when um, came up with a schedule for the cruisers of a 5-4, five, 5-4. Four, five, four. We've never gotten five. It's always been four. But I was here back in the early 90s when um, they cut cruisers two years in a row. And it, didn't, it didn't really hit as hard until a couple of years later when we actually had to double up officers in cars um, because they were, the, the mileage, they were falling apart. The mechanics couldn't keep up. I don't think we have the mechanics now that we did back in those days either. So um, they, the cars, they, they take its toll, you know, there's a toll on those cars. And it's, when they start getting up around 100,000 miles, they, they just aren't safe. They aren't, uh, they aren't functioning correctly. And, and uh, I know if, again, almost like with the AEDs, if, if somebody's having a heart attack or somebody needs a, a police officer in a, in a quickly, um, we got to get there. And if the car falls, doesn't, doesn't work, uh, we don't get there. So please don't don't cut the cruisers again this year. Uh, I'm begging you because um, I know, like I said, I know what it's like. I know what happens, and it's happened to us before. I don't know exactly. if you. Oh, sorry, Chief. Okay. That's all right. No, I was just going to kind of add on to that. I, um, Mike O'Neill at one point had just had the CN, um, CNEF numbers up, and what we did to try to absorb that is we uh, the council last year created a reserve fund. A vehicle reserve fund. So I, I did reduce it from four to three. I, I said to the chief, absolutely advocate for the fourth. Um, and so what I recommended in the budget was a use of reserves to cover the a, a portion of all three with a, a remainder coming from the general fund, um, just so that council is aware, trying to be creative with what what you've what you've creatively created in the past. Chief, um, do you have a number of how many patrol vehicles you currently have in service? Yes, I don't have it here with me, um, but we have, I believe we have 15 marked cars and maybe 10 unmarked cars. We have other cars that we've held back that we use for like traffic and for dare and for, um, you know, non-emergency type things. In fact, we even still have a couple of Crown Vicks left um, and they went out in 2012. But uh, the line cars, the cars that we need to, to, to respond to calls, to, to get officers to where they need to be, uh, you're, you're talking probably less than 25. Roger, thank you very much, Chief. No problem. Matt. Thanks, Mayor. Chief, we've had this conversation a couple of times, but uh, Westport and I think maybe a couple other police places have, have started to purchase electric vehicles um, with the thoughts that the maintenance, as you just described, would be much less over the long term because they take such a beating and drive trains and, and trans, uh, transmissions, et cetera, and brakes. Has there, have you gotten any feedback from other police departments such as Westport when they start to move to an electrified um, you know, electrified fleet? Well, pre previous to this, I, I understand electric cars are getting better. But prior to this, uh, you remember when we did it with the natural gas cars? That was a disaster. Yeah, that's a different, it's a different being. I know, but what I'm saying, and electric cars were the same way. I mean, how long do they last? How long does the charge last? You're gonna have to stop an officer in the middle of a call to send them back to get the car charged. I understand they're getting better when it gets to where you can at least get an eight hour shift out of a uh, electrified car and it's not, they respond good, well, um, then that's something that we can entertain. I'm not sure what Westport is using. I doubt very much they're using them for line cars. Okay, so we don't have any sort of feedback on that. I mean, I well, the only feedback that I had gotten through the years was that it's it doesn't work. It just doesn't work for the operation, a police department operation, especially one that we want to have our response times, you know, less than five minutes. And we do, and we, we're proud of that. Um, if you want a response time like Harford has, 
that's you know three hours, then I guess we could use the old pedal cars. What what makes you think that an electric car would have a less of a response time than a gasoline car? Because they got to get they have to be charged, and they didn't respond like a gasoline engine did pre previous to this. Right today, I understand that they are getting they are better. Um, hey, Harley Davidson makes an electric motorcycle. I wouldn't buy one, but uh, they make one. I understand it's pretty nice. But the problem again is the charging. You know, can you get an eight-hour shift out of a charge? I no. You'd have to you'd have to put a car down for whatever length of time it takes to charge, or have enough cars to where they go and replace the car while the other ones are charging. It, it's just not feasible now. But don't get me wrong. I, in the future, I have I'm sure maybe by 2035, all cars will be electric. Okay, I didn't know if you had any feedback from you know other. Uh... It sounds like you don't from other police departments that have. Well, the only feedback I've ever gotten was they hated them. Okay. So far. But like I said, I think that they're going to be better in the future and it will maybe the way we should go. But then again, too, they are a lot more expensive than a traditional vehicle. Okay. Thanks a lot, Chief. Appreciate the feedback. No problem. Anybody else for the chief? Definitely just like physical services, a lot to digest, the two biggest departments. And uh, I think we've got Carol Hurley coming up next, probably our smallest department. So you're all set with me? Thank you very much. Thank you, chief. Be safe. You too. Take care. Okay, Carol. Hi. I think um, we've got Maria on as well. Thank you, Maria from Gannon. Hello. How are you, ladies? Good evening. Let me just get to the binder, but you guys off, please. And do you guys want to uh, give us some highlights from the budget? Um, sure. I mean, I, our budget pretty much remains the same every year. Um, we had an increase in um, poll workers and a lot of uh, ballots, et cetera, because of no excuse absentee balloting. So there were increases in that area. We used a lot more scanners, a um, lot more memory cards. Uh, so the, the, obviously uh, this year was different for everyone um, going forward. I don't know what the landscape's going to look like. I know there'll be um, probably no excuse ballot, um, no, no um, excuse absentee balloting and um, on the ballot in 2022. And there's a lot of discussion about that, but that that'll be down the road, but definitely will be affecting our costs in our department. Um, one thing I would like to mention, which isn't in our budget, and I kind of gave Mike Rell a, a mini uh, presentation this afternoon at Town Hall, was um, how many inactive voters we have and how difficult it is to clean our files, even though we do get what are called canvas reports and ERIC reports from the state but they tend to be very outdated. And unless we get a response from someone, they go into the inactive file. And we have close to 800 names on that list that are inactive, not to mention probably all the, all the voter cards in the active file that we aren't aware of that are, should be removed. 
So um, I had suggested, I showed him all the return envelopes we got for the absentee ballot applications, plus the files, um, and um, had been looking into something that the assessor's office uses called LexisNexis. And anytime I've asked them to look up a name, it's always been accurate. And I've always received a response and have been able to remove the voter. So really that's the only thing I'm requesting in, in addition to our usual budget. I mean, really our budget is close to some people's, our entire budget is close to some people's salary. So um, it's a pretty small budget. And over the years we have reduced things and we've reduced um, our office numbers. There used to be um, the registrars plus the deputies and two clerks. We've reduced costs in far as, as far as um, setting up the polls is concerned. Um, you know, just different things over the years to try to streamline. But um, I really find that we spent so much time trying to clean up files with um, information that we receive from the state that's not accurate. Um, so that's kind of what I want to say. I mean, like I said, our budget's pretty straightforward. We provide a service, you know, it, it is what it is. We, you know, we have to buy X amount of ballots. We have to hire so many people. Um, you know, there's nothing fancy going on in our office. Any questions? <laughs> Maria, would you like to add anything? <laughs> nope. Sounds good to me. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> All right. This may be a question for Mike O'Neill. I don't see, I see office supplies, general office supplies, um, but that was zeroed out. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I, let me take a look. You mean that whole line is zeroed out? Yeah. Maybe yeah, I, I, I mean, we don't, uh, well, we have elections, elections, which is one category. And we have elections administration. And most of our office supplies are, I believe, stem from elections, elections. So that may be why that happened. And we don't have a lot of just general office supplies. Okay. Well, I mean, one of our biggest supplies for the office is probably ink, especially with now because online voter registration is so prevalent. You know, even a few years ago, we received cards. Now we print cards continually. And because of the accessibility, it's constant with people making party changes and name changes where we didn't see that in the past. So that's one of our biggest office expenses is what I would say. So maybe that's why it has been zeroed out because I consider that an election expense. like. But it, you know, it does. It could be either way. I don't know. Mike, you were What? What you're seeing on that line is actual amounts for 19 fiscal 19 fiscal 20, but there's traditionally been nothing budgeted on that line, so it wasn't. You can see the adopted budget in 2021 is zero. Right. Likewise for this year. Um, a lot of times, what happens is. Uh, departments, you know, I, I, I encourage departments, if you have an unexpected expenditure um, and it's not on a line where you budgeted funds, you know, classification wise, it belongs in office supplies. I'll use this example. Then please record the expenditure there. Don't, don't record office supplies on a, you know, training budget just because you have money there. We like to see, we like to be able to go back and look at actual expenditures um, and know that the classification reflects what was actually purchased. So that, that's, I, I suspect, is what's happening there. But it wasn't zeroed out. There was okay. no, budget, no budget. Yeah, no budget. It, it, yeah. I see the adopted 2021 next to it. Um, my question for that, though, is Carol showed me the returned envelopes, and there were two or three boxes of them. Do we pay first class? mail to mail those um voter letters, canvas out. letters out yes the canvas letters yes our first class mail and then roughly how many did you show me today carol how many Five were there cards. oh yes. gosh okay. i don't know 
300, 400, I, I couldn't even say. That's okay. a fair guess. Yeah. But okay. we, we, we send those letters out to those people where they come back returned and nine out of 10 times they aren't returned. They, um, and they just remain inactive. And that was, that was my point about the Nexus Lexus, which is very, very accurate. And anytime I've asked the tax assessor if they could get me an address, it's always been delivered to the right person and has come back and made it, you know, it, then we're able to remove that person. I, I think our, our voter number is, is inaccurate by at least a thousand voters. Can you take them from the Democrat side and move them to the Republican side? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been trying to do that a little by little by little, but only when Maria's not around. Mar Maria's keeping <laughs> eye on that. I'm the um, gatekeeper. That was that was funny. That was that was good. Come on, it's almost nine o'clock. So no, no, that, no, I'm serious. That was like that was actually solid comedy. <laughs> <laughs> um. So can. And can you explain some of the, the cost that was borne by the town this year with the change in how um, the elections were handled? Most of that was covered, if I'm not mistaken, by the federal money that went to the uh, Secretary of State's office and came down to you guys, correct? Right, but That's it went correct. to the general fund. So, we, you know, we're, we're not... We, I, we may be in the red this time. I've never been in the red, but I think we may be this year. Because that that money, that grant money went into the general fund. Those, those funds, funds that we receive from the state are considered revenue. So until the council makes an appropriation with them, they they, they don't go to a budget line item. So that's something that will come up towards the end of the year, you know, when we do September with budget transfers. Or if something happens before. I don't know about the budget being in the red though. Yeah, uh, I looked at it recently, but it's pretty close. I got a I got a report and um I and I thought it was it was getting there. I mean we still have expenses. I mean we still have what what month we have Yeah we're in know, April. You, you still got right. two months to go. Yeah. Two and a half months. I'm just saying I don't I don't have it in front of me. I don't I don't know if it's in the red. I, I, I have it at work. I don't have it in front of me. Um I just have I just kind of was looking at the Lexus Nexus stuff off and on this week and some other things. I and I'm playing catch up. I mean we have been slammed since July and um there's really hasn't been any downtime, so I'm kind of not as organized as I usually am. Any questions about any of the lines? I mean, like I said, we have, I think our whole budget is like literally with salaries, like what is it, one? 137. Yeah. Not a lot to discuss. It's pretty straightforward. I just have a general question. The, the discussion that you, you uh, or the description that you gave us about the voter rolls being inaccurate and uh, what you think needs to be done to correct that. You don't have any money in this budget for that. Is that correct? Uh, that, that is correct. I thought we did because we always have money left over, but because of all our expenses this year, due to all the extra ballots, all the extra training, all the extra poll workers, we do not have the money. I'm not okay. sure. I, I, I had them print me something probably a month ago and we were getting pretty close to the to the bottom and we still have expenses um ink is always a big expense i i know i have to order a bunch of ink again and um we're pretty we're we're pretty much there i mean if we do have the money but i mean maybe i'm wrong and gary saw something that i didn't see um sure i'd love to spend it on that absolutely that was my Carol, plan until Carol, i saw the numbers Carol, just to be clear, I don't, I don't know. I don't have it in front of me. I, my comment was simply that I don't know if it's in red. I was commenting. I was, no. I was agreeing with you on the, the funds don't go into your account. They're held. Um, okay. 
revenue. Right. I just but, couldn't but find I did, I did um, have someone upstairs, um, Kathy, I believe, sent me all our numbers and um, they were, some counts were negative and some weren't, but they were all pretty close from what I recall. But I could be wrong. But I, Carol, what the LexisNexis though, um, tell them how much it is. Like we're, it's not much that we're requesting. Um, yeah, I mean, well, I, I've been negotiating with him for a couple of months, you know, and at first he wanted the three-year commitment and that, or a two-year commitment. Then he would give me six months free if I gave him a three-year commitment. So basically today, today I said, listen, I'm, I can't do a three-year commitment. I can only do me a, a one-year commitment. I, give me your best offer. And I think, what did I tell you, Maria? He said, I, I know you said he took another hundred off of it. Yeah, per mm -hmm. month. So well, I, he, he gave me a 200 month for a year commitment, which is his best offer in four months. And I, this guy is pretty, pretty relentless, but I just told him, you know, I don't think it's happening. You know, budgets are being cut. You know, we're going in tonight. Give me your last best offer. And he gave me a 200 a month, one year commitment. And it was much higher than that when we started out. Okay. Definitely so, something to consider. I, I think there's a couple other departments that use LexisNexis. So um, I did talk to Marlene and they do use it. And when I talked to Brad, um, for some reason, he does not have them in their database and he couldn't explain it. He found it really strange, but I don't know. So I did talk to them and I talked to Brad about it, but he knew nothing about the tax assessor's office um, utilizing that. And it I don't is know supposed why. to come with three user IDs, so three people can use, um, a, you know, if you buy a subscription to it, three people should be able to use it. I don't know if the assessor's office is using all three of their IDs. You they know, are. they are. So we would just, yes. you know, you know, we I get, don't know we get three additional users if when we sign up. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if there's another department in um, town hall that would want to share it with us because we don't necessarily need all three of the users. Why wouldn't they go to the assessor's office and see if they can add a user on to their account? That might be cheaper than right. your I was, I was told it couldn't be done. And then when I talked to Brad, he said he doesn't even have them in their database. So I have approached them about it, but that, that was what I was told. But... Okay. I, but, you know, I literally just found out tonight that Brad does not have, Brad is from Lexus, Texas. He doesn't have them in their database. And he was really puzzled um, why that was so. Cause I did ask him about combining services and he knew nothing about them being a client. So I really, I, I that was where we left it this evening, but he did come back with that lower offer, which was much lower than what he had what they were offered in the past without the three or two year commitment, just only a one year commitment. And I mean, we could really clean up our files in that year and not necessarily have to follow up again with them. It would be much easier to stay on top of things. I mean, we have a lot of elderly voters in our files, but unless we have confirmation, like we cannot remove them. And a lot of people move out of state and then they die. So we're not getting, you know, we're not seeing obituaries. We're not seeing them from on the death list from the town clerk's office either. So they're just kind of in limbo. I guess when they hit like 115, we can kind of figure they're dead. I, I, I don't know, but I mean, we have a lot of elderly voters and granted some are alive, but I guarantee you a lot of them aren't. Okay. And even when they come back undeliverable, we still have to get confirmation. And that is according to the state. We can't just say, oh, this wasn't delivered. They don't live there anymore. It doesn't work that way. So what I'm, I'm hearing is it may be a cost of $2,400, but if we can save on office supplies, envelopes, letters, toner, and obviously postage for four to 500 returned letters, or more. Right. Then, and then going forward, we, we won't have those big canvas lists and Eric lists. If we've cleaned up our files, 
we won't have all those mailings that we have to do, which are not only time consuming and waste money, we don't get any results really. The list from Eric with the 30 state group is so outdated. I, I have friends on that list who haven't lived at this new address that they're sending us in several years. So I know just even from living in this town and knowing people that they're not up to date and accurate. But yet we have to send letters out to all those places and for them to come back unreturned or not returned at all. Mm -hmm. So I don't really look at it as, a, as even an addition. I mean, down the road, I think it would save us money for like, you know, next year's canvas and Eric going forward. Gotcha. And Eric is the state uh, secretary it's of state. A, it's a 30 town or a 30 state organization. It's called the Electronic Registration Information Center. And 30 states are involved and they share information. But as I said, the majority, Eric is worse than the canvas. The majority of that information is very outdated or inaccurate. Okay. So we might be able and to now, say whether that's on the state's end, not getting the information out uh, in a timely matter, or if it's Eric not working the way it should be working, I don't know. Okay. Any <clears throat> questions for Maria or Carol? I just sort of have a general question um, because I feel like last year was so strange um, with COVID. <laughs> <laughs> just a little. Just a little. <laughs> with COVID, but it was also a presidential election with like a record high turnout. Um, and then of course, everyone could vote absentee. So it was sort of a crazy year. Um, and your budget went up last year in, in anticipation of, uh, you know, this and the it being a presidential year. This fiscal year, there's just municipal elections, but it, the budget is, you know, it's just going up like 1.7%, but but still on top of sort of the big jump last year in anticipation of all these issues in the absentee voting and the presidential election. I just sort of feel like it shouldn't be going up. Um, sorry. Um, so, or it shouldn't be sort of leveling off at that higher amount, but I'm, you know, I don't know. I mean, it's, I'm looking at the numbers and I guess maybe it's just, I don't know, is this is salaries? I mean, whatever. No, just, trust me, salaries have not gone up. <laughs> not very much. So, or, yeah, but so, so why is it, why I would think it might have gone down, that's all. And it's, you know, because, well, we're go because we, um, is it this year, um, I guess it's just municipal elections, but we're not going to have um, absentee voting for any reason or no excuse absentee voting this fall. Is that right? Well, no, that is definitely, it's, it, they we have, might. Um, oh, we might. Yeah, it's through the end of May. So anything going on right now has absentee voting still. No, no excuse absentee voting. Whether they extend it or not, I don't know. That's another story. Denise Merrill clearly wants it going forward forever and that will be on a ballot for the constitution a constitutional amendment at some point but you know as far as the fall i i can't guarantee it there may be no excuse it definitely increased our numbers for the primary in august which typically has a low turnout and we had a much higher turnout because of the no excuse absentee voting um as far as costs are concerned, a lot of those costs remain the same regardless of what goes on on an election year, like maintenance of our scanners, battery replacement, um, uh, memory cards, um, the canvassing, Eric, all those things remain the same. The only thing that would, re would differ going forward in, an, in a smaller election is um, not as big as the staff for poll polling places, and not as many ballots. Although if you do the no excuse voting, um, you know, it was really hard to determine how many ballots to get this time. And literally they were doing emergency ballot orders the day of the election. That is unheard of. I mean, you do your ballot order and it's a done deal. I even did an, an 
I think Maria, didn't I order ballots, just extra ones the day of the election? Yeah, the state if was, I was offering it to I all the was, towns. I was panicking and we were fine, but I was just so panicked because you just didn't know how it was going to go. You thought it was going to be, you know, the majority was going to be ABs, but many more turned out to the polls than was expected. Whereas in August, nobody went to the polls. It was all absentee voting. So, I mean, you've got those variables. On a rare occasion, Casey White, for instance, there was a primary that never happened. But yet, we still had to, we had ordered ballots and definitely spent money, even though that primary never happened. There could be a primary in September if somebody decides to primary for the town council. I never thought I would see it happen, but clearly it happens. Um, so never say never. So, it, you know, even though there is one scheduled um, polling event this year, that doesn't mean there might not be another. And I think it's important to note that we have six polling locations. So whether it's a local election or a presidential election, we still have to run, operate, and staff six polling locations. But maybe the staff, you wouldn't need as many staff. No, we, we don't. We don't need as many, but it still has, you know, we still need staff for all six locations. And if there's, um, if it is a large absentee ballot, um, we'll need more staff than in the past. In the past, we used to have a few people counting ballots at the end of the night in um, the room next to Gary's office. Um, we had a full-on production this past election with six different teams of two and two moderators counting absentee ballots. Well, I know that um, the governor's executive orders for his, you know, the COVID emergency are expiring like May 19th. Um, and if there has to be a constitutional amendment for no excuse absentee balloting, I think- Well, I think they actually, I think those COVID restrictions that end on May 19th don't, are different than what we have. I think our restrictions end the end of May, May 31st. And that I think might be correct. a different issue where they can extend that going forward as opposed to the May 19th. Our, our, our date is not tied into that May 19th date. But if, if I, I, I that's if I'm remembering correctly, our the um, no excuse goes till the end of the month of May, because people are having a lot of towns have referendums continually, like throughout the year. So they're having elections now. Right. Okay, but that wouldn't affect that wouldn't affect us because we no, don't it doesn't affect us up until May. But if he. if they decide to that they need to you know say the you know. COVID numbers go up or the, there's a variant. I don't know. I mean, I know that Denise, in my opinion, Denise Miro will use this to her, to her advantage. Okay, I'm not trying to get too political here, but, but I am, I guess. She will use that to her advantage to get that no excuse voting to happen in the fall. She wants it. She's wanted it for years. This is her yeah. dream come true. Yeah. <laughs> Just think that. Go too, <laughs> I don't want to go too far afield on this. So, um, we have the budget in front of us, and you know we have the numbers, so um, we'll take a look at this. You know, obviously, without all departments, we will be going through them. So, if you guys have anything else you want to share, or if there's any other questions. Um, not at this moment. <laughs> okay. I think we're good. Maria, you good? Uh, I'm good. And just to answer Mary's question, there, there is like a statewide push to, um, to amend the voting rules to allow for, um, no excuse absentee ballots in the state of Connecticut. So it is, it, it is a good possibility. That is what our elections are going to look like going forward. Oh yeah, I'm aware, but I thought that would be after the constitutional amendment. I, I know there's a push for it and that's coming. Yeah. I don't, I just don't think it's in this fiscal year or this upcoming. No, no, it won't be on the ballot. The question won't be on the ballot till 2022. I'm, I'm almost sure of that. Yeah, I'm, I'm just the amendment this year. But fun. that doesn't mean that somehow or other they're going to extend that for the fall. 
depending on what the landscape looks like and what they're saying about COVID. Just my thought, but you know, there's many years where we have money left over and it goes back into the general fund. It's not like, you know, woo, you know, let's go to the mall. I mean, it's, like, you know, it, it's there, it goes back into the fund and that's the end of the story. I mean, you know, it, like I said, most of those numbers remain the same. Staff is smaller, less balanced, but all the other costs remain the same. All our upkeep and, you know, servicing and all that stuff remains the same. Thanks. Sure. Okay. Without hearing anything else. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Carol. Thank okay. you. Good night. Have a good night. Are we the last ones? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. Well, have fun. Hopefully only a few more. Just one, but broken down. Okay. <laughs> Mike's on. Mike? Mike? Who? Mike on. Oh, okay. When you said that, I Okay. Do you want to go through yours, Mike, finance department? Sure. Um, I can run through, I guess what I'll do is a little bit of a summary information for everyone first, and then I will do the finance department and the IT department, just because you're kind of in the same vein as the, the presentations that you've heard. Um, and then there's a series of other ones that we can do as many as you would like tonight. They're not really, uh, you know, they're more cost centers than departments. Um, but let me, so let me do that. I'll do the, the, the first two. First thing I wanted to just make everyone aware of is the, uh, and I hope everybody can see that under the additional information tab, um, the first four pages are just the first two are summary, summary of revenues, second two are summary of expenditures and the proposed budget. I wanna talk just briefly about this fifth page, um, which is something you've seen in the past. Um, it's a little, a little busy, there's a lot going on here, but uh, I think if you, if you appreciate what's going on here, it, it may help you a bit. And what I've done is taken, um, I don't know, People can see my uh, my cursor moving. Mm -hmm. I can. Uh... Uh, let me try this. That's a little better. Okay. Um, that red column is the proposed budget. There's the the total amount that uh, that we're working with here. The 112 12 million. Um, what I've done is I've I've separated the top section here is sort of operating departments. The bottom section is, is, are those other departments, we call them departments, but they're kind of cost centers for things like debt, debt service, insurance, um, retiree medical, and things like that. And what this does is just, I've taken the personnel costs that we allocate across departments, you know, a good place to look is this column, pension. Um, this sheet allows you to see everything in one place. It's really difficult, I think, to appreciate, you know, what's going on with pension when you're looking at uh, Anthony's budget, fire marshal, and you see that great big increase or something. So this takes that amount from each department, shows you the total $3.4 million. And then in this line, it compares it to last year. So you can see last year was $2.9 million. This year it's 3.4, that's, that's that 18% increase that I talked about. So if you take that line and what I, and I put some boxes around some of the bigger changes, um, those, are the, those are the increases in each of those categories. And then over here are the increases in those non-operating departments. And there's just a lot of good, you know, if you wanna know how much, you know, the police department, you know, what's the percentage of the total town budget? Well, the police department is 20% of the total town budget. It's it's 9.7% when you add in the board of debt. Um, so just a lot of a lot of perspective here in this sheet that that may help you um, as we go through these. 
All right. Let me go to finance. Okay. Finance department. Overall, uh, we have a slight uh, decrease in our request. A lot of that is because of pension. Again, you can see here. Let me let me talk about my staff first. Besides myself, I have four full-time positions. Um, we've also I've requested um, reinstatement of the part-time position. I've got twenty-five thousand dollars in there for that. That is uh, a position that has not been funded in the last two years. Um, and again, I'm just, just putting that back in. Uh, that's something that I need and I'd be happy to uh, talk about that more if you'd like. But I, I've had, it's been kind of a, a challenging year for us in finance. Um, I had uh, two women with 20 years of experience each in the department um, who've retired over the last year plus. Um, one was, I. Uh, treasury and capital projects analyst and the other was our uh, payroll supervisor. Um, we've, we filled, uh, we took our, our accounts payable clerk moved into the payroll position um, several months ago and then we had another, uh, we filled the accounts payable position um, from another, another staff member in town hall that didn't uh, didn't work out. That person went back um, by their own choice to uh, to their department after a couple of months, um, and then we had a vacancy for a while again there. And we finally, I think we've got that filled now um, uh, permanently. We took another uh, another person from another department in town hall who's filled that position and uh, quite nicely. And uh, we're back up to full staff, but. Uh, you know, between kind of replacing the 20 years of experience times two uh, has been challenging. But anyways, um, beyond that, you know, again, just to look at that part-time position is just uh, just a position that we really need in terms of uh, workload in the department. Um, other than that, just, just kind of going down through, um, there's now that it's fairly unremarkable budget, travel training and dues. Um, you can see we have not spent money on training. You know, it's really that four thousand um, dollars. You know, that's something that we would uh, we'd probably look at to give up if uh, if we had to. But you know, particularly with the with the new folks in the department, um, you know, if we get back to training um, like it used to be, uh, we'd like to do that. Um, we did have ten thousand dollars in the budget this year. That was for uh, for consultant kind of uh, kind of part-time help um, as we transitioned from the uh, from the in the payroll position that's not included this year so that was a that was a decrease uh, there um, and that's just again fairly unremarkable office equipment you know supplies uh, you know we we post uh, the procurement solicitations in the uh, in the current you know so we have some money for that um, and that's about it. Any questions on that? I got, I got one, Mike. I was, I was afraid I was on mute or something there. There was so much <laughs> silence. Crickets. Let me run through it again for everyone. <laughs> um, again, good humor. <laughs> trying, trying, Matt. <laughs> so you're you're able to um, add a part time position, and yet still reduce your your budget. And is that mostly because of that pension? Yeah. So it's that it's the ten thousand here that that's not repeated, and it's this eighteen thousand here. You know, and medical medical went down too. And again, that's just a function of, uh, you know, who's who's taking it and who's not. Well, could you work that magic on all the other departments, please? Well, the, you know, you know, the the other side of this eighteen thousand dollar decrease is Anthony's increase. So 
I wish I could talk to the actuaries. <laughs> it is kind of creative that the finance director pushed off a cost to another department. I'm just going to say that. You know, the funny thing is you'll see the same thing in IT because we had a retirement, <laughs> a retirement in IT as well. Yep. Which had nothing to do with me. Seems like this is the, I'm sorry, uh, Tom, did you finish up? I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, I'm, yeah, I'm all. It, it seems like this is the time to talk about pension um, as a whole. And I'm, I'm referencing not just the uh, article that we're seeing sort of, there's a pension line here, but even more broadly, when we saw the little over half a million dollars to the defined benefit pension plan, could you just sort of uh, pin, down, pin down a little bit why we're seeing that kind of an increase on that particular line item? So 17%, 18% increase uh, <clears throat> benefit right in the middle there. This one here, yeah, it seems like one of the major, you know, players here in the ballpark. Yeah, so we're kind of chasing uh, changes in assumptions. So the way the the way the process works, and I'll actually have more information for you. Um, I'm expecting literally any day, kind of preliminary results from the valuation. So we have a value. The actuaries do a valuation on the plan every year. That valuation. Uh, it does future projections of what our liability is for uh, benefits, uh, you know, 20 years into the future. They also calculate the contribution that the town needs to make to the plan, um, the required contribution, which is something that it's not legally required, but it would be, um, it would be looked upon very, uh, negatively by bond rating agencies, we'd probably get a finding from our auditors if we did not, you know, make the recommended contribution to the plan. So that that's coming that and, and so what the act, the actuaries have all kinds of assumptions that go into this, right? They, they sure. kind of project when people will die, how long they're going to have their benefits, how much they're going to make in the future, all of that. How, and how, back how to the fund. The right? And the fund is are going to per, are, are going to perform over time, so all of that's based on assumptions. Which um, the big one is is the assumed rate of return uh, on the portfolio in the trust fund, and that's something that um, we've done a very good job of uh, taking the advice of our actuaries and reducing that. Um, our target right now is six and a quarter percent. Um, that's down from six. The target is down. Um, lowered the target a couple years ago, and we're so we're sort of when I say we're chasing the assumptions, you know, we've done a great job over the last you know five ten years of bringing that assumed rate of return down, um, but they keep moving the the goalposts on us all the time, and that's just what they do. I mean, it's just it's it's that's something that every pension plan deals with. Um, and so when they do that, they're assuming less, less will be earned by the assets and therefore our liability is greater. And in order to address that liability over time, we have to increase our contribution into the fund. So that's right. what, so, and again, so the last two years, so last year they changed the mortality tables. We did not make any change to the assumed rate of return, but the the change in the mortality tables, that's something that hadn't been done in 12 or 15 years. So there was a little bit of catch up in those assumptions. It hadn't been done industry wide, I should say. Um, yep. You know, that's something again that everybody's dealing with. Um, that generated uh, close to a, an 18% increase last year. So we took, we, you know, the actuaries are reasonable people. They, uh, you know, they didn't expect us to, uh, make progress on the rate of return when we implemented the uh, the mortality tables. So that's behind us, that's done. We've sort of swallowed that and now we're back to having to address the decrease in the rate of return. So that's- that's and the projected the offset is an 18% increase in contribution. I'm sorry? And the offset of that change over time is an 18% increase in contribution now. Is that basically what we're saying? Yes. Okay. And just so, 
uh, you look at this much more often than I do. The defined benefit pension or the pension obligations that the town has for everyone that is contracted to get a pension from all the previous contracts. Is that generally accurate? Yes. And so we, you know, over time, we've sort of, as a town, we said, okay, we're going to move off of this and get more into that traditional, you know, let them do a 401k, you know, the workers and the rest of it. So are we going to start to see sort of like a bell curve? And because we, you know, people are coming, we have the pension obligations are not being replaced because the contracts that we have don't have traditional pensions. I think maybe with the exception of maybe one or two pools. Is that generally accurate? So the dynamic is that you've got fewer people paying in. And again, the police pay. They right. pay and a new police employees, sworn employees are, uh, are brought into the plan. But everybody else, town and board of ed, it's a, it's a shrinking pool of active employees who are paying in. You know, so we're, we're in this sort of period of transition and we're really seeing it. I mean, we had... I think we had seven or eight retirements this year, which was, you know, kind of quite a few. I mean, I had, like I said, two in my two in, in finance and one in IT. Um, you know, we had some in physical services and and the police. But um, so we there is a, a new dynamic that's a that's a function of that. Fewer people paying in. Um, more people, those people that are no longer paying in are moving and collecting their benefits, right? So it's becoming, um, you know, they're, they're moving over to that side of the equation. But we're not adding, where we used to have a lot of these unions and workers had, um, you know, we're going to get pension benefits. Now they're not getting those pension, pension benefits. So there's like, we're sort of stopping, you know, with the exception of police, I think is a major exception. But for all the rest of them, now they're not being added to that liability over time. And I believe we stopped, we started changing those contracts, you know, 10 plus years ago now. So when can we start to anticipate on the glide path that, you know, that will start to catch up to the benefit of us where we're not having people retire that, that we have this pension obligation for? Isn't is there kind of a bell curve there generally, except there's a little tail because, you know, we're still adding the police in? If if I could um, come back to that next week and and pull some uh, pull some charts out of last year's valuation, I mean there's a lot of great data, and and I can distribute it to everyone. I think I think it would make sense to do that. Um, last year's pension valuation, and uh, I, I I'd prefer to do it, you know, to to study a bit because this is not this is not my strong suit, but I can I can't speak to it. Um, but there's a lot of good good information in there. But you're you're exactly right. There's a there's a dynamic at play here, and and I'd rather not characterize it without kind of going back and and studying that a bit. Right. It, it is, I'm, trying, it, I'm trying to see what our glide path is here. Whether this, whether and how much leeway we necessarily have in this particular area. If our if our glide path is is, is almost you know is going up for three or four years, and then it's going to you know start to tail off for five years. How, how are we calculating that? And is, you know, are these assumptions reasonable? So, okay, but thanks, we'll, we'll talk about it more. Yeah, uh, and I, will, I will get some more information for everyone. Okay, thank you. And the other thing that we are seeing is if you look at, you know, in this line is, you know, so those employees that are not in the pension plan are in the defined contribution plan is essentially a 401k, it's what we call, uh, 401a um, for public employees, and you can see, you know, there's a there's a little upward pressure on that line as well. You know, that went up seventy six thousand dollars. You know, almost six percent. You know, which is a little more than than what we've seen um, in recent years. So there's there's that dynamic as well, but it's nothing like um, it's nothing like the what we're dealing with on the on the defined benefit side of things. Right. Thanks for that info. Mike, did you want to continue going or were there any other questions on this? I'll go to IT if, um, if there's nothing more for finance. Just take a couple notes.
Okay. Again, uh, I hope it's no reflection on me, but I'll talk about the staff. We've had an awful lot of uh, turnover in IT as well. We have three positions on the town side. We do work in conjunction with the Board of Ed kind of under a shared services model. Um, we benefit greatly from the, uh, the time um, and, uh, and talents of uh, Jim DeRagan from the Board of Ed, who is the network engineer on that side and very much a, a kind of a big player on our side in terms of project management and just, just expertise. So Jim doesn't appear here, um, but uh, he, he contributes greatly to the, uh, to the team here in town hall. We also have Officer Dave Gove at the police department who really uh, essentially runs the IT operation um, there and, and to a lesser extent has involvement with the radio system, but uh, he does quite a bit there. But nonetheless, we have three positions on our side here in town hall. Uh, we did have one retirement and the, uh, the IT, the info specialist um, retired. Uh, again, a lot, of, uh, a lot of talent there. Tom had uh, 20 plus years with the town and uh, he retired last fall. And we also, um, we added this IT technician position um, a couple of years ago, um, actually more than a couple, it was back in 2014, the IT director retired and his position was removed and replaced with this IT technician. That salary um, is really uh, kind of problematic for us. You know, we're, we're, it's something we'll probably talk about in the future. Now is not the time. We've had two uh, pretty talented people in that position over the last five years, both of whom have left um, for, for better jobs. Um, so we lost, we lost the person that was in that position last fall. Uh, we filled that again recently, um, but that uh, unfortunately did not work out. And uh, you know, that, with that position is open again. Um, and again, it's sort of, it's just, a, it's a challenge, but anyway, so we're, we've, we've gone most of, uh, you know, we've gone since last October with only essentially only one of those three positions filled. So it's been, it's been a challenge, but again, um, that's the salaries. Um, you'll see a decrease here again because of pension. You know, Tom retired, and so now um, there's no one who's in the pension plan in the department. Um, likewise, you know, it pushes up on that defined contribution. You see that go up. Um, that's the change there. Other changes of note: we have um, we continue to be very focused on cybersecurity, as you can imagine. Um, we have uh, transitioned from, for our desktop uh, antivirus and malware protection from Symantec to malware bytes. So where we were paying $1,400, uh, we're no longer paying that. Um, we do have this $10,000 item in the budget. That is a three-year cost. You know, that's why there's such a big increase there and such a difference. It's a little bit more capability there uh, compared to uh, Symantec. Um, but that is a, that is a three-year uh, cost there. Um, everything else in this section is, is essentially status quo. Um, there's some different systems uh, that we have, and I'd be happy to, to talk about any of those. One of the large costs in the department is the wide area network. Um, you may recall we, we uh, renewed that contract, renegotiated that contract um, about a year and a half ago. Um, and essentially, you know, knocked a few thousand dollars off of what we were paying and extended that for seven more years. So we're, we're, uh, we're very pleased about, about that. Um, but that's what that is. That stays, that'll stay the same for, for a number of years now. Um, we are proposing to add this item, which is a fallover internet circuit, um, $6,600. And that would be it's basically, it's a redundancy for our internet connection, our internet uh, service. Uh, twice this year, twice in the last three months, I think, we have suffered disruptions um, to our internet service, you know, caused by breaks in the fiber network, not in, not in the least fiber that the town pays for to connect our buildings, but in the fiber 
here in the vicinity of, um, you know, of town hall and the police department um, where there've been breaks in fiber that have uh, disrupted service there. Um, you know, we, we kind of worked our way through that, you know, uh, over at the police department, you know, didn't last more than um, a few hours, uh, at, you know, each time, but uh, that's something that we want to address. And, and so that would be a, a fail over um, a separate circuit. You know, I think it comes in from, from the opposite direction into, into the police department. So it's just a, something that would provide redundancy for us and we wouldn't, uh, we wouldn't suffer those kinds of, of shutdowns like we had or, or perhaps something worse. Um, beyond that, again, these are just a number of different applications that uh, are used by various departments you know, that we manage uh, out of the IT department. Um, we did do some upgrades in conjunction with the, uh, the renewal of the, the WAN circuits, the wide area network. Um, we installed new uh, firewalls. So you'll see some, some you know, internet filtering that we used to pay for that's, that's sort of built into these costs up here. Uh, the last section is on the next page is our equipment budget. And I lost my cursor. That is uh, just, that's just hardware essentially that, uh, you know, we, we've increased that a little bit. We like to, you know, we like to increase that a little bit, you know, just be to kind of keep up with the needs, you know, in different departments. Um, and that just covers, you know, everything from laptops to uh, desktops and servers and uh, the various uh, software and licenses that we need for those. Mike, does the, I, uh, does the iPad include Anthony Dignati's request? His is in his department. And you'll see that a little bit here and there. You know, you see it, you definitely see it in the police department where, you know, they're, they're buying equipment. Um, but he, he included that in his budget. Okay. And we have a, you know, obviously, if you think about the last year, you know, real demand for mobile devices and laptops. So we kind of scrambled uh, a year ago to get some, some laptops. Um, people are kind of more and more transitioning to that. It gives them, gives them mobility, the ability to, uh, to work from home on occasion and things like that. Can I uh, jump in here, Mike? Sure. Um, when it talks about, when we talk about the finance budget, just looking for some perspective, you talked to, uh, a few times about how much staff you have, you know, there's been some retirements, we're gonna replace them. Can you give me a feel for what the size of your finance department is and what the Board of Ed's finance department is and whether or not there might be a symbiotic relationship to form one finance department within the town as far as uses and how many people each have, et cetera. Yeah, I think it's pretty similar. Um, they have a business manager, you know, so if you just sort of think uh, they have a, a person who handles accounts payable as we do, they have a person who handles payroll as we do. Um, and they have an analyst, uh, it's, it's pretty similar, I would say. I mean, it's in terms of positions and, and, and just, yeah, positions, bodies, if you will. And is it the, would you, if you have a feel for like, is it the same sort of level of work responsibilities for each side? Is, are, are we running two separate payroll systems when we could be running one? Like, are there some major efficiencies of scale or just you know non-duplication of efforts because we have two departments that type well, of thing i can't speak to to their you know the demands on their positions and kind of their workload you know the the work is a little different let me let me back up the, first of all the system we do share a system you know we use the same uh system and i didn't i didn't talk about that but it's down here uh the system is munis which is uh, we split that with the uh with the board of ed um, evenly. So we do use the same system as they do. 
Um, and we do share, you know, in terms of, you know, we've, we've benefited a lot, you know, with the transition, particularly in payroll, um, you know, getting questions answered and things like that, um, you know, by calling over there. Um, their operation is a little different than ours. They don't have a balance sheet. You know, they, they have a checkbook, you know, and, and I don't mean to, to simplify it at all. They deal with many, many more grants um, compared to us. And, you know, but we have, uh, we have bonds that we pay. We have, you know, leases that we pay. We manage cash flow for the whole operation, both the board and the town. Um, you know, we handle all the treasury functions, you know, investments, all of that. Uh, we admin operate the uh, the medical self insurance fund. You know, is is uh, managed on our side. The pension fund is managed on our side. So it's a different different operation. Are you managing on your side for for both sides, or is it managed on your side because it's only specific to your side to the town side? For both. So pension fund is is both sides. Yeah. Um, what did I say before that? Camera. Uh, the, you know, the insurance program, workers' comp, um, and the 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 lap policy, li liability, auto property. You know, we we have the relationships with the with the brokers and and staff, the insurance committee, and all of that. Are there are there towns or cities in in this state that do run sort of a holistic finance department for both organizations that you know of? Um, I'm sure there are. I don't doubt there are. I can tell you just uh, you know, my experience as city controller in New Haven. Um, we ran, well, we ran payroll for both the Board of Ed and the city, you know, out of one office. But, you know, there's involvement, you know, there's, there's even here, you know, there's involvement in the payroll is done sort of in the departments, as well as by finance, you know, the departments handle a lot of the uh, the time, the time accounting for time and attendance and all of that, and finance does sort of the processing of payroll and and you know and getting the money in the right place. Yeah. So, if you but, had yeah, if you had any other, back. not not to a holistic, but if you did have a couple other towns that that run a singular finance department for both education and the town operations, I'd be interested in just getting sort of a short list if you've got one. I, I don't know any off the top of my head. Do they East Haven used to? I don't know if they still do. Yeah, Colchester tried it. I don't know if they still do, but um, I'll give some thought to that. See if All I right. can. We don't have to solve it right now. Thanks for your time. I'll do it after the projections. Sure, sure. <laughs> Mike, anything else with? Where are we at on this? IT down. You want we to gotta, run through some more of these, some of the other areas? Well, if there, are, if there are no questions. How we've done in the past where you have you broken these up um, and come back? on a second night or a third night to discuss these or do you want them does everybody want to just run right through them I'm just mindful of people's time there, there's a few here that are quick you know maybe what i would suggest um i'd like to do a little more prep before we talk about um medical you know retiree medical and actives you know because there's some there's some interesting things going on there. We're going to talk about uh, uh, the insurance committee last week recommended a move from Anthem to Cigna. You know, that's a, a marketing effort that uh, Chris Monroe and his group have been working on uh, for us for over a year now. And uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of potential savings there if that's uh, something that the council decides to do. Um, so I'd like to do a little more prep um, before I talk about that. Um, but I could do, I could do debt service and uh, I could do a couple of these quickly. Yeah. Okay. With your preference. Why don't I do debt service, central office and uh, transfers out in MDC. Those, those I can do in, in 15 minutes plus questions. Oh, don't get dizzy here.
uh, debt service. This is just, uh, this is payment on our bonds. And I think we have a couple leases in here. I'm just trying to see if we still have, looks like we had a couple leases for IT equipment um, related to the high school that we were including in here, but I think those have all run off. Those were all three-year leases. Um, so those are done, but you can see the, uh, there's a 0% increase. Um, what we have done for the last couple of years, uh, we had premium that we earned, if you will, or that we were given in conjunction with the bond issues that we did for the high school. Um, that's basically uh, what they do. And I can show you, there's a little, a small summary up here. This is a summary of the, uh, if you can see that. That's a summary of the, the borrowings that we did for the high school, 22 million, um, 600,000, 11 million, 8 million. But in, in, with those larger bond issues, uh, what the underwriters like to do is, is, because the interest rates were fairly low, is to state uh, a higher than market value interest rate on the, the bonds themselves and give us the difference in what's called premium. So we had, uh, at the outset, we had $3.6 million of premium. So they basically give us, they, we pay more over the life of the bonds, but they give us the difference up front to reflect the market value. Um, so that's basically money that we had up front um, that the decision was made years ago to use that to offset the increases. So you can see that's what happened here in past years. So the last couple of years, we've, we've stabilized the debt service. Um, we're gonna use, or we're proposing to use $58,000 of that premium of what's left. There'd be 87,000 left after using the 58 to just uh, to just keep that at the same level as, as last year for a, for a $0 increase. And then this is just a, you can kind of see here, um, you know, the different issues uh, that we have outstanding um, and where those stand. There will be uh, a fairly substantial, you can see the difference in those two numbers right there, almost a million dollar drop in debt service in fiscal 23. And that's just a function of, you know, here's a here's an issue that that runs off, and then this one this one is not fully run off, but it's uh, there's quite a drop there too. And this worksheet is is in your uh, it's in your books if you have any any questions on that later. Can we speed that up and get that nine hundred and forty thousand dollars this year? That would be nice, but we can't. There it is right there next year. Any questions? I have a, a question um, about the premium. So what, so you proposed the 58,000. I know it's not much left. But next year, it's going to be a big, like a million dollar drop. Why wouldn't we just use the remaining amount of the premium, like add the 87,000 with the 58? You can definitely do that. Okay. <laughs> we just, you know, I mean, we put that out there, right? You can see that. Yeah, and you can you can do that. Okay. We just sort of we just sort of like uh, the way I budget is just to go with the program that the council has sort of adopted in the past. So that's what we've done. We're showing that, but we're we're totally transparent here, one hundred percent, which is why this number is down here, and that's why I pointed to it. Right. So that we could use that. We most certainly could. I'm having a little trouble understanding. Uh, is one way better than the other? Or? No, it's just money that's sitting in the bank, Tom, that's been there for a couple of years that, uh, again, it was, you know, back in the, back in these years, well, we're, yeah, this is where we used it. We used quite a bit, you know, we were, you know, we were 
we weren't thinking about these years out here, but no, that's, uh, again, that's, that's there for the taking. Just, <clears throat> I mean, I'm not understanding the difference in the strategies, like, you know, oh, strategy of what not using the 87. Yeah. yeah. It's just, we've been, we've been keeping it. We've been using the premium to keep it flat. Right. But it's just, it's, I'm, I'm not <laughs> like, I, it was like I just said, the numbers are all here on the page and I pointed. No, I, I realize that. Use them. I just, I mean, I could have put it in there and it would have been $87,000 left, yeah. but I showed you where it was and I'm going to let you do it. So I, I budget, I put the budget together with the program that the council has, has used, you know, that we, that it, the, you know, to use Matt's term, the glide path we've been on for the last few years right. and then I leave that there and, and I let somebody else be the hero and, and plug. Mary, me. Mary gets to be the hero. Thank you. There's a few more of those. Oh, go ahead. Can they add up the couple of million? No. <laughs> Mary, you're up in your pencil. Nope. Don't be shy to point those out, Mike. <laughs> you know, Damn it, look at me. In case somebody not sharp. We started talking 20 out. minutes ago. I already gave you the, the 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 move to Cigna. That's the big one. The move to Cigna and this one. Good things coming. Okay. So I suppose this would be the time to mention. I do also have a mistake that I have to uh, that I've made, and you'll see it on Monday in Townwide Radio um, for twenty. I think it's about twenty three thousand dollars. An item that I. Um, I erroneously uh, just left out in the kind of the, the last minute scramble, but um, I'm glad I had this moment to, to prep you for that. So there's a couple, you know, there's a swing there too, but um, mostly in the other direction. Where, where in on... Um... Page two of the, I guess, debt service. Um, where are the town wide radio um, payments? Which one is that? You're looking at the, at this schedule here. Yes. On the screen. So the leases will uh, the leases will show up in transfers, which we can we can jump to that anytime you're ready. How close are we to paying off that townwide radio? Uh, let's let's hop over there. So, transfers out two point one million dollars is a couple of things. It's the it's the CIP projects seven hundred fifty six thousand. That's this. That's uh, those are all the pro. We do a five year plan. Uh, the CIAC uh, Capital Improvement Advisory Committee um, starts back in January, and they look at all the projects and make recommendations. They recommended uh, almost 900,000. You, you know, we, we, we cut that back last year, but we had gotten the program up to uh, $900,000 a year. You know, we did, um, did cut that back a bit down to uh, 756,000. Um, and again, we'll, we'll talk about that, but that's one component of transfers. The other is the $1.3 million you see here and that is CNEF, that's this number. So included, we talked about a couple of these things earlier tonight. You know, we talked about the, the tools and the bottles and the fire department, um, the trucks. Uh, these items up here are lease payments for equipment. Um, that total amount is over here. Uh, so here's, you know, Mayor, to get to your question, these are all the leases um, other than there, there's a couple um, that we had put in with the bonds because they were related to the high school project. This is everything else. Um, so here, in this binder. Say again. It's that sheet in this binder. 
Yes, it's in the, it's, it should be behind your transfer tab. Transfer. Got it, all the way at the end. Yep, yep. So you can see uh, uh, the council has, has chosen to avoid leasing in the last couple of years. So we haven't leased anything since uh, December of 18. Um, you finally see the fruits of that here uh, with the payments dropping by 180,000. So we've also, uh, you put money away at the end of fiscal 20. So last summer, um, you know, when we looked at that, there was money left unexpended in the budget. You put, uh, you put money into uh, the radio reserve and the CNEF uh, reserve and also this vehicle reserve. So we're using the vehicle, the vehicle reserve money over here to offset the cruisers. They, you know, those three cruisers cost 172, but there's only $22,000 in the, the budget request because we're taking money from the, from the reserve. Again, that's this one. And then also these two reserves that, that you also uh, set up from the leftover fiscal 20 money last year, which you see over here, which are reducing. There's the, there's the total of the lease payments. So if you, if you were to total up those five lines, you'd get the 1.2 million. And then you take out the 400 to get the net amount that, that rolls into the budget. So that's the- 87. Say again? That's the 887. 887.4. That's right. That's yep. right. Which, which itself is 148,000 less than than what we had last year. So kind of you know again with the setting the money aside from the from the unexpended balances, you know it, it's uh, you know we're finally seeing a little bit of a little bit of reduction there, you know. So to go back and just you know kind of look at what's what's running out here, the big item out into the future are those two engines we bought uh, a couple of years ago. You know they go out to 29. You know I'm not showing those here. But here's the radio right right here is the radio that was a three million dollar uh, radio we bought. Those are uh, we got two and a half years left on that. And then the other long one is the uh, the aerial that we bought back in I think that was seventeen that we bought that, and that'll be uh, that'll be paying. It probably was in fifteen. It was probably a ten year, um, ten year lease. So that one's got four more years. Mike, how come the radio is not equal payments? Uh, why does it drop off like that? The last payment. Uh, I think there was a half year in the first year, kind of a nice way to ease into, uh, into a new program. Okay. So probably, that's probably what happened there. Any other questions on transfers? We can come back to this anytime you want. So why don't I just do uh, MDC is pretty easy. That's just uh, that's just a bill the MDC hands to us, and thankfully this year it was uh, it dropped by I think it was about two hundred thousand, almost. Um, and then the only other thing we pay for in this department is uh, the, the sewer, uh, the housing authority. Uh, they get billed directly by the MDC uh, for their sewers and we pay, we pay that. And that's jumped up a little bit in the recent years, but just because of the, the MDC's uh, the clean water fund program. Why, why did the MDC <clears throat> price drop? I thought they kept their rates exactly the same. 
This is the ad valorem, you know, so they... Oh, it goes by the that grain list. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a little bit of a little bit of shift on you know relative. They do it on tax collections, um, so there's a little bit there, and then just you know I think they, well I don't know yeah. I don't know the whole the backstory on it, but they, you know I think they they recognized if I did if I had to guess they'd recognized you know what a what a challenge that uh, that was over the last few years, and so we're seeing a little stabilization there. And. When they uh, when they do that grand list, the ad valorem, they don't include the housing authority properties. Is that how that works? Yeah, because they're tax exempt, so they're not they're not part of it. So they get billed directly. I'm not getting that. They're tax exempt. So, I guess the theory is they're not in the base that, you know, the, I guess the user base that's, uh, that's, that is billed via the ad valorem. So they have to be billed directly. And I don't know the history of why we pay it, but we pay it. I guess, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, so there's other, there's other um, tax exempt properties in town. Right. That don't the residents pay for their sewer, basically. Like uh, uh, labor department or somebody like that, right? Yeah, I don't, I don't they don't know. pay an ad valorem, so it has to be paid by the residents, right? I don't know. Okay. If, I mean, it, you're probably right, but I don't, I mean, it's not, that's not how it works for the housing authority. I don't know if that's the same, you know, they figured out a different way for the housing authority Then maybe they, maybe, maybe you would see something similar with some of those other properties. I don't, I just don't know. I can look into that for comparative purposes. I mean, my assumption is for DOL and state properties are taxing those separately um, just based off of conversations that I've had with MDC. I don't think they're included as part of our, they wouldn't be included as part of our grand list or our calculation. Um, but I can, I can kind of delve into that a little deeper and get some answers. I suspect the residents are subsidizing all the non-taxable properties. Where else would they get the money from? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know why the housing, I know the housing authority gets a separate I think it's a super bill. A super, yeah. You're good to find out, right? I think if, let's find out what's going on. Just get back to us. Okay. All I've got. Okay, well, got some notes and some questions. Gary, I think you'll probably fill in or some of the department heads will come back to you with some of the answers of concerns that were raised tonight. And Mike as well, any, uh, any questions for these guys? or in general at all? Mary? Necessarily, I don't necessarily want to get into this now since we've been going on four hours, but um, I did want at some point, I'm sure Mike will be back so we can go over like some of the, uh, it, and we touched on it at the beginning, the um, revenue projections. Um, I kind of wanted to dive a little more into that, but not tonight. <laughs> you know, it's uh, sometimes for that specific stuff, you can have offline conversations. They can get you what you need and then just kind of let us know at the next meeting. I don't think we need to be overly formal about that if it's helpful. Okay. It may actually give us the opportunity to put information together too, so. 
Good. Okay to adjourn, Mayor, if you are. Yep. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Come on, group. You can do it. <laughs> you got that, Gary? Motion by Matt, second by Mary. Way to go, Mary. Thanks for the help. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Aye. Eyes have it. Perfect. Okay. We'll talk to you guys later. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night.